University of Colorado football. From Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma, it's the University of Colorado Buffaloes versus the University of Oklahoma Sooners. Today's game is brought to you in part by... and Honda, the Colfax Connection. With Dave Logan and Dave, you don't want to overemphasize this, but this game we're about to see may be one of the more important games in the history of this program. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I liken it to a situation that I'm sure everybody's been involved with before. The bully. When you were growing up, you went through school, and uh, the kid that we went across the corner, you found him, you took your lunch money, you took your big hunk candy bar, sometimes you took your girlfriend, and, <laughs> and sooner or later, as you started to get a bit older, you started to mature, you started to get stronger, and you had to plant your feet and, and make a stand. I think basically that's what the University of Colorado is going to have to do here today. You know, we talked about this last night. Colorado, third-ranked, undefeated, maybe the best team in the country. They know they've got what it takes. But how do you get over the emotional feeling when you run onto this field, when you've lost so often in here, of getting over that last hump to make you really believe you can do it? That's a good question, and one that CU will have to answer. They can start with Darian Hagan, a, a fine sophomore quarterback, but this has not been a favorable place to play. Hagan, of course, not knowing that, but CU hasn't won since 1965 here. Darian's had a superb sophomore year. He'll have to play very good football today for CU. And, of course, getting the second straight start, J.J. Flanagan, who had 10 carries, 178 yards against the Jayhawks last week. It's nice to see J.J. seasoned. Of course, he had a lot of experience last year. And certainly, Flanagan will be a key, uh, a key ingredient to what Colorado does this afternoon. Of course, Oklahoma loaded with injuries as they come in. That man, Ike Lewis, takes over at the tailback spot for the injured Mike Gannis. He's not as big as Gannis. He doesn't break as many tackles as Gannis, but Ike Lewis is a terrific talent. Maybe uh, untested a bit, but certainly in the mold of the great Sooner tailbacks. Obviously, this is the first in a three-step program, I think, for Colorado. If they're looking at national honors, this one today, they have to find a way to get. No question about it. Uh, if they're going to take the next step, which is Nebraska, the following Saturday, they've got to get this one this afternoon. We're excited. Hope you are, too. We're glad you're with us. Pull up a chair and come on back for the opening kickoff. I like to be a doctor because I like helping people. I'd be an astronaut. I think outer space is neat. I want to be a movie star and act in movies. I'm going to have a mansion bigger than the world. <laughs> U.S. West employees volunteer their time to focus on you so that inner city kids can hold on to the notion that anything is possible. Raging floodwaters stormed through the town of Pueblo, Colorado in 1921. The people of U.S. West helped save hundreds of lives. Hello, Mrs. Jenkins. Move to higher ground. The water's coming. Your little boy is safe, Jenkins. Fifty-five years later, when a collapsing wall of the Teton Dam unleashed its waters, the people of U.S. West again leaped into action. Dad, hi! Setting up an emergency phone center within hours by shipping equipment from out of state. Today, the companies of U.S. West are still helping people cope with the sudden furies of nature. Ray's towing. This is Ray. Uh, I've skidded off the road at Summit and Crest Line. With state-of-the-art cellular phones and the latest advances in communications technology. Hi, it's me. Somebody wants to talk to you. Keeping the dreams of the West safe. Hey, Mom, we're not going to be home. Real soon, honey. U.S. West, making the most of your time. I'm talking to Steve Dowson, president of Empire Olds Honda. Last week, we ran out of time before getting to him. Steve, why do you feel you're the best dealer in town? Because our overhead is so low, and we are off the so-called car row, we must give bigger discounts to our customers on both Oldsmobile and Honda. We're also dealing poker hands to everyone that comes in. They can win up to $5,000 in additional savings. Now you know why Steve at Empire Olds Honda, four blocks west of Monaco on East Colfax, believes that he is the best dealer in town. Colorado 7-0, undefeated, 3-0 in the Big 8. Oklahoma 5-2, 3-0 in the Big 8. The facts are these. The Buffs have not won in Norman since 1965 when they won 13-0. Oklahoma has beaten Colorado in 12 straight. Oklahoma is 19-3 versus Colorado in Norman. This is the first time that Colorado has met Oklahoma with a better record than the Sooners since 1970. Of course, the Buffs 
seven and zero, oh, and that's their best start since 1937. With all those factors, Dave, at least <laughs> most of these kids, some of them were not born yet when a lot of those streaks started. Yeah, that's not a, a pretty picture you just painted, but uh, those are the facts, and I think it's important, obviously, for Colorado to get off to a good start. Bill McCartney emphasized that during the course of the week. They don't want to land on the carpet. They've gone two games without any turnovers. Imperative that they get off to a proficient start and continue to play good football throughout. Oklahoma won the toss and elected to kick off. So obviously their strategy, get their defense on the field first. Hope that they can stop Colorado and get good field position. Brad Riddell, number 84, will kick off. Pritchard and MJ Nelson are deep for Colorado. Colorado looking to improve on that number three ranking. Looking to bury a lot of ghosts as we're underway. Pritchard some five yards deep. Touches it down and Colorado will start on their 20. Okay, early on the wind might be a factor here. Swirling wind. Not sure as we walked in the field before the game as how it will, will affect the uh, affect the throwing, but it might be a factor. You take a look at some of the, the injured for the University of Oklahoma, Mike Gaddis on crutches, talking to Kenyon Rashid, the fullback, who also is out for the remainder of the year. This is a banged up Oklahoma team, but still with a great deal of pride. It is cool and windy as we start playing Norman as Hagan keeps it, gets a couple before he stood up by the free safety, Terry Ray. A pickup of three, it'll be second and seven. And you can see Oklahoma emotionally up right away. Offensively for Colorado, the brilliant Darian Hagan at quarterback. J.J. Flanagan in for the injured Eric Bieniemy. He is dressed but probably won't play. Kissick the fullback, Pritchard the wingback, Parrick the tight end, up front. Coleman, Garten, Lewenberg, Muhlenberg, and Vanderpool. From the 23 on second and seven. The handoff to Flanagan. Out to the 25, and that is it. Reggie Barnes, number 40, the weak side linebacker, makes the tackle but a fumble. And we'll have to unstack it and wait. I believe he's going to call the ball dead. Any doubt that Oklahoma would come out and be mentally into this football game, certainly those thoughts have been dispelled early. Dixon, Dillard, Dante Williams, the nose guard, along with Scott Evans up front. Thompson, Belzer, Ray, and Franks. Levins and Barnes are the linebackers. Third and five for Colorado. The Buffs have had great success in the first quarter this year. Hagan looking to throw. Darian with a hole, but not enough, as he's brought down to 29 by Stacy Dillard. Sophomore left tackle in for the injured Tom Backus. Backus and Corey Mayfield, two uh, veterans on this defense, are out today. Well, you can see the play action pass. I'm not sure Darian Hagan gave this pattern enough time to unfold. Not bad protection, tried to cut it up and just about a yard short of the first down. Tom Ruin on for the Buffs, one of the best punters in the nation, averaging just a shade under 46 yards a punt. Oh, this kick bounces inside the 20, inside the 10, and it'll be down down the 11-yard line. Another excellent punt by Tom Ruin. Well, that's a great kick into a stiff breeze. And he hasn't had a chance to kick very much the last few weeks. Tink Collins is the quarterback. They had a three-man battle for that spot. Of course, Charles Thompson now in prison. Ike Lewis is the tailback for the injured. Mike Gaddis, Manning, Sawatsky, Wise, Medice, and Van Kiersbilk up front for Oklahoma. On first and 10, Ike Lewis up the middle, a big hole across the 20, out to the 22. That should be enough for a first down. Terry Johnson made the tackle. Well, Oklahoma's a team that has struggled the last couple of weeks, but they still believe they can run the football. You can see an excellent job up front getting hats on people in white jerseys. Very big up front, Ike Lewis. 
Proposition 48 case last year, now forced into action with the loss of the great one, Mike Gaddis. Lewis now in motion. Leon Perry, the big fullback, is the lone running back. Perry's got it, breaks a tackle, runs hard out to the 30 where Terry Johnson hit him first. But it's another big game for Oklahoma, a pickup of eight. It'll be second and two. Perry, 88 carries for 419 yards, averaging just a shade under five a game. Defensively for the Buffs, same defense that have started the entire season. Walker, Steed, Salavia, they are flanked by the H boys. Alfred Williams and Canavis McGee. Johnson and Jones are inside. The deep uh, secondary, McLuhan and Gibbs with Young and James. Here's the pitch to Lewis. He is thrown for a loss back in the 25, and there's a flag down as Arthur Walker made the tackle, but Alfred Williams really made the play. He strung it out, Dave, and wouldn't let Lewis get outside. This is a good job of forcing, as you mentioned, Ron, the run back inside. Terrific job by Alfred Williams, forcing Ike Lewis back inside. The penalty's gonna go against Colorado, but great pursuit inside by Canavis McGee. Now, you made a good point. We've talked a lot about this, and we'll wait and get the call here. It's a first down for Oklahoma. Colorado comes in, never before on a streak like this, as a player, and you know what it's like down there. How intimidating is it for a player on the on the floor of Owen Field? Well, it's a very tough place to play, but I, I don't think it'll be any more intimidating than, than what this team has been used to over the course of the last couple of years. The point is really believing you can win, and that's something that, that comes with success over and over again. That's why Oklahoma even banged up firmly believes they can win this football game. Gary Gibbs said uh, this week, hey, we are hurt, but we will not concede anything to a great Colorado team. They have never beaten us, and there's no reason they should beat us today. Of course, Gibbs in his first year replacing Barry Switzer. First and 10 for the Sooners. They're on their own 35. Their first drive of the game. Collins cuts it up, and he's thrown for a loss by Joel Steed, the nose guard, the sophomore out of Hinkley. Anytime you play an option team, very, very important to gain penetration quickly. Watch how fast Steed gets off the block. He shows in the face of the quarterback, and Arthur Walker right there, too, turning Tink Collins back into Joel Steed. Got to make sure you don't allow Tink Collins to run down the line of scrimmage and then have the ability to make the decision before he sees that white jersey early. The loss of one, second and 11. Collins wants to throw, steps up, throwing deep, incomplete. Off the hands of Arthur Guess. I'll tell you this, he was very, very close to being over the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure we'll be able to see it from this angle. Right at the line of scrimmage, and a good throw as Arthur Guess, who has caught three passes this year, all for touchdowns. You get a pretty good reason as to why one of the fastest members of the Sooner team, and that was close to a big, big play. Oklahoma's going to pull out all the stops from all the people we've talked to. They don't throw the ball very well. Collins is 15 for 37 on the season, but today I think they feel they have to throw. They can't afford to fall behind the bus. From the 34 on third and 11, Collins keeps it. Makes a nice move. He's got a first down. He's in the Colorado Territory at the buff 47 before Michael Jones ran him out. A first down for Oklahoma. But Tim Collins making the correct decision on the break. You see him right here as Walker unable to get up the field. Good job blocking from the outside, too. When you can pick up first downs in an option attack from third and 11, you're really going to be a pretty good offense. That's something Oklahoma has not been able to do a lot of during the course of the last few years. You see Collins' stats through the air. That's on the season. Perry's got the football. He's not going very far, just a couple. Down to the 45, Arthur Walker made the stop. Geez, Oklahoma grinds out a few first downs, a, a, a big penalty against Colorado early. A couple of things that it does. It enables Oklahoma to keep possession of the football and thus drive down the field, but it also keeps the CU offense off the field. That was something that Gary Gibbs pointed to during the course of the week. Important for my offense to maintain control of the football. Yes, the wide receiver brought the ball in, brought the play in. 
This is Lewis. Michael Jones wraps him up at about the 44. So it'll be third and about seven. Of course, we talked about that, the series all in Oklahoma's favor. Last year, first night game ever played in Boulder, and it was a terrific game. Went down to the wire, 17-14 Oklahoma. On third and seven. Collins. It's incomplete, and Oklahoma will have to punt Ted Long as the ball was deflected. Ted Long was open, but he and Collins were not on the same page. Bruce Young got a hand on it. And again, you get most option teams in third and long, you're going to be successful. See, the ball was tipped as Long broke in on the, the quick slant. Riddell, you see his numbers on the season. Jeff Campbell is back at his own 10. Going for the corner. And he doesn't make it. It's into the end zone. 9.24 to go in the first quarter. Each team has had it, and each team has punted it away. Hi, I'm Jake Jabb. Factories like Merzman, Bassett, and Simmons are giving us up to 70% off the wholesale prices. So we're having a big in-store, one-half-price warehouse sale at all stores. For example, these swivel rockers and 100% nylon covers are now only $79 your choice. Or these oak bookcases are only $69, $79, $89, $99 with adjustable shelves. Or these Bassett 18th century tables are made to sell for $169 and now only $59 your choice. Our in-store warehouse sale is on at all stores. At American. Look what's rising out of the pumpkin patch this Halloween. The Pumpkin Cutter, a great way to let your kids carve their own pumpkins without sharp edges that cut little hands. It even makes toothy grins easy to do. The Pumpkin Scoop removes seeds and pulp better than any spoon. And the Pumpkin Light replaces dangerous candles with glowing results. Have a great pumpkin this Halloween with the Pumpkin Cutter, Pumpkin Scoop, and Pumpkin Light. Pumpkin Cutter products, available at Woolworth and Osco. Football gave me great memories and some painful needs. I remember those smelly old-fashioned liniments, but time and training methods have changed. Today's trainers use Flexol 454, the aloe vera-based pain-relieving gel used by trainers in all major pro sports. And now Flexol is available to the rest of us who live with pain. I might just ask for my old job back. Flexol 454, it's a winner. Colorado has it. First and 10 from their own 20s. They stop Oklahoma after the Sooners had accumulated three first downs. Hemingway now in the game at fullback with Pritchard and Flanagan. Hagan keeps it. And he's hit and thrown for a loss. Scott Evans, fine junior tackle out of Edmond, Oklahoma, made the play. Well, Barry Switzer last year said Scott Evans, as a sophomore, was the best defensive lineman in the Big Eight. Good penetration. You can see these Oklahoma linebackers get inside. Blevins spins Hagen back right into the arms of Scott Evans. Hagen, CU's leading rusher. Four games uh, this year already of over 100 yards. But so far in the first four plays, the going has been tough. Second and 11. Hagan, fine catch by Hemingway across the 30 to the 33. That should be a first down for Colorado. Reggie Barnes made the tackle. One-handed grab by George Hemingway. That's a pretty good snag by a fullback. You can see Hagan goes back. He wants Hemingway. Watch this. The right hand point just pulls it in, and George Hemingway lined up actually flexed outside a little bit and then just released to the outside, sat right down in the seam and waited for the football. Hemingway, one of those players getting better by the week for Colorado. Hagan keeps it. To the 36. Frank Blevins, strong side linebacker. Second leading tackler on the team, made the stop. You know, Oklahoma defensively, after playing last week in Ames, Iowa, taken a lot of grief, especially here in Norman, but still they are giving up only 15 points per game. This is a defense that gives up a little over 100 yards rushing per game, and 
certainly very capable of shutting down most teams that rely, for the most part, on a running game, and that's what CU does. The Buffaloes are going to have to throw the football and connect in order to loosen this defense up before the game's over. Second and seven for the Buffs. Hagan on the option, nowhere to go, and down he goes. Wayne Dixon along with Stacy Dillard and Frank Blevins all strung it out. Didn't give Darian any room. It'll be third and about seven. And again, the key to the option, watch how many red jerseys appear in the backfield before Hagan can actually decide as to whether to cut it up or to pitch it. Frank Levins, again, doing an excellent job from the inside linebacking position of getting penetration and forcing Hagan to stop inside. Colorado looking for their first first down of the afternoon. Hagan with time. And it's incomplete as he was looking for Parrott, and the Bucks will have to punt. This is really pretty good protection as they run the, the lead fake, and Hagan looking downfield. You can see Oklahoma good depth by the linebackers, and Hagan takes a shot right after he delivers the football. Bill McCartney said they are going to stop us sometimes. Oklahoma is too good defensively for us to drive the length of the football field all day long. How we adjust and how we take that mentally will largely, or will be a large factor as to how the game is ended. Ruin kicks this one down to the 25 where Greg DeQuasi takes it and is knocked out. So Oklahoma, when we return, will start from their own 25. GMC Truck now offers proof that actions speak louder. It's Action Cash with $1,000 cash back on S15 pickups or $1,250 cash back on S15 jimmies. Available both on new 89 and 90 models. Or choose low APR GMAC financing. So don't miss Action Cash at GMC Truck. You'll have a very good reaction. GMC Truck. It's not just a truck anymore. GMC Truck. If you've got yourself a car and you've got yourself a house, you could be on your way to some very nice savings. Because with Allstate Homeowners Insurance and an excellent driving record, you could save up to 15% on your auto insurance. And 15% could mean big money for all the important little things. What a day. What a day. The Allstate Auto Advantage. Another reason. A member of the Sears Financial Network. go for the best deals in Denver to your Denver Metro Chrysler Plymouth dealer. We've got LeBaron Coupe now with $1,000 cash back, $750 cash back in Plymouth Acclaim, or get the New York Landau with $1,000 cash back. The best is what you get at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Denver's way to go is at the sign of the best, your Denver Metro Chrysler Plymouth dealer. First and ten for Oklahoma. Big hole for Perry as he's out across the 30 to the 31, Bruce Young. And a flag is down at the 32. Young made the tackle. I think this one, this one will be coming back as Leon Perry really has been a guy that uh, one of the few backs they've been able to keep relatively healthy at 99 yards last week against Iowa State. Big, strong fullback in the mold of a wishbone fullback. 230 pounds, and he'll keep you honest inside. Illegal motion on the Sooners. Colorado will take it. That'll push him back just inside the 20. 6.53 to go in the first quarter. Colorado's had it twice. Oklahoma with their second possession. You're seeing the Sooners this year more in the I formation, largely in part to the inexperience at quarterback. Now, they come out basically in the bone this time, but... In the I formation, you can take a lot of pressure off your quarterback in terms of him making the right decision. Flags everywhere as Oklahoma did not get it off. Colorado has scored, Dave, 87 points in the first quarter this season. I think you're seeing now, Ron, just uh, a lot of jitters, a lot of nerves, kind of like a heavyweight bout as both contenders, that they, they feel each other out, and they do this and that you've got guys jumping off sides and I think a break a fumble an interception a mistake by one of the two teams probably will get their opponent going 
and it might take that to get going against two pretty stout defensive units. Gary Gibbs is 35 years old. There was Bill McCartney. First and 20. Collins looking to throw. Here comes the rush. And down goes Collins at the 17. Joel Steed put Collins to the turf. Second and about 18 for Oklahoma. Certainly a different M.O. for Oklahoma early. Not in the bone a lot. Not able to execute the option and simply roll up big chunks of yards. They've attempted, I mean, at least gone back to throw three or four times and we're midway through the first quarter. It's a good point. You used to never see Oklahoma in anything but the bone and now they're in the eye and things have changed here in Norman. Handoff up the middle. That's when the parry. He's out across the 25. Canavis McGee made the stop. Brings up third and about 10. You can see what Colorado has done. They have really not had, Dave, a close game yet. On the other hand, Oklahoma, a couple of stunners, 6-3 at Arizona. They lose in Texas and then escape at Ames last week, 43-40. believe the uh, right guard for the Sooners may have jumped. Once you get down, I think Larry Medice might have rocked back and forth a bit. The ref referee is going to wave it off and say no flag. Inadvertent flag. <laughs> I wonder how that can be. Well, I didn't mean to throw that. John Laurie of Springfield, Missouri, the referee. See, third and ten. Defensively, when you play a team like Oklahoma or Colorado for that part, th this is where you want to keep them for the most part. They may pick it up. They've already converted one third and long. But percentage-wise, you win most of the battles when they're in third and long. Gets and long are the wideouts on third and ten. Collins looking. Now being chased and now being nailed back at the 24-yard line. And Oklahoma will have to punt. Alfred Williams, again, was the man that made the play. When you force a team to throw that doesn't throw many times, now Oklahoma has thrown 13 times. That's the most in any one game. Dean Collins is not a prototype drop-back passer. When you make them do that, you force them into things they're very, very uncomfortable with. And again, see you defensively. If they can continue that, we'll be very successful here today. Chad Brown was also in on that play. Number 34 is Riddell hunting to Campbell. Jeff going back all the way to his 20. Hitting down across the 30. Dewell Brewer, the tailback, who does a good job on special teams, made the tackle. 4.49 to go in this first quarter from Norman. Colorado and Oklahoma are scoreless. There's never been a better time to buy a new Chevy truck than right now during Chevron Chevrolet's giant truck liquidation sale. We're overstocked and we're going to liquidate $5 million in new Chevy trucks immediately. Don't be confused by ridiculous offers. No one sells new Chevy trucks for less. With two-wheel drive starting at $59.88 and Chevy 4x4s as low as $89.88. With these low prices and 2% financing every day, I say with confidence, if I can't beat any deal on a new Chevy, I'll give you $2,000 cash. The giant truck liquidation sale, Chevron Chevrolet, I-25 and the Bowler Exit. Look what's rising out of the pumpkin patch this Halloween. The Pumpkin Cutter, a great way to let your kids carve their own pumpkins without sharp edges that cut little hands. It even makes toothy grins easy to do. The Pumpkin Scoop removes seeds and pulp better than any spoon. And the Pumpkin Light replaces dangerous candles with glowing results. Have a great pumpkin this Halloween with the Pumpkin Cutter, Pumpkin Scoop, and Pumpkin Light. Pumpkin Cutter products available at Osco. They're working overtime. Big Sur Waterbeds has made a special waterbed purchase, and manufacturers are working overtime to fill the orders. Right now, just $109.99 buys the Shiloh with bookcase headboard. This four-poster bed with detailed headboard is only $189.99, or the Covington with glass front coverage and center mirror is $269.99. Buy your new waterbed today at Big Sur Waterbeds, America's largest, West Colfax, East Colfax, and 58th in the Valley on Furniture Row. So each team has had it twice. Neither team has been able to score. 
4.49 to go in this first quarter. Colorado has it first and 10 from their 32. Kissick back in the game at fullback. Hagan gives it to Kissick. Eric across the 35 to the 36 where Frank Blevins, strong side backer, made the stop. Pick up a four, second, and six. And again, just as we said, Oklahoma keeps the CU defense honest with Leon Perry. So will the Buffaloes with Eric Kissick and George Hemingway. Have to pound that fullback inside, make those two inside linebackers stand in there and force them to read the fullback first before they flow and run to the option game. It's the best field position Colorado has had. Here's Pritchard. You won't make it to the 40. Scott Evans hit him first and then got help. Hey, Colorado is working into what has now become a a pretty stiff wind here in Norman, and it's in Colorado's face here in this first quarter. Well, Mike Pritchard hasn't had many opportunities. This is a play that against your normal defenses really results in a big play. Pritchard, a nice job of stepping back against the grain, but Oklahoma very, very quick in pursuit. And a good job by Scott Evans. Third and about three for Colorado. Kissing. Depends where they spot it. First quarter, Nebraska and Iowa State tied at seven. First quarter, Kansas lead Kansas State, seven nothing. Fourth quarter, West Virginia leads Boston College 34 to 30. I think we're going to be a little bit short here. Colorado looks uh, about a foot and a half. Actually make that about a foot. Interesting trying to get three yards with your fullback and you can see Kissick meets Blevins head on. Tries for the first down and Bill McCartney looks like he has intentions of going for this first down. Hemingway trots on the field. It looks like Colorado will go for it on fourth and about a foot. So the first gamble of the afternoon. Crowd is up. Three minutes to go in the quarter. Fourth and less than a yard. Hemingway. Well, Oklahoma thinks they've stopped them. It certainly depends on where the spot will be. But they didn't get them a lot of yards if they got the first down at all with Hemingway. I, this, don't, I don't think they got enough. This is a case where penetration gets to the handoff point almost before Darian Hagan can hand the ball. You see Dante Williams from the nose doing a good job of sliding to the left side, and he was right there to greet George Hemingway. The crowd tells you the story. Oklahoma takes over inside the Colorado 42. First big play of the game. to go in the first quarter. He just joined us for scoreless. Best field position of the day for Oklahoma. Tink Collins at quarterback. A handoff just to Perry. He gets to the 40. Then Avis McGee along with Michael Jones made the stop. Interesting decision on fourth down by Bill McCartney to go for the, the first down on fourth and short. I think most coaches will tell you coaches that have good rushing attacks if we can't get a couple of feet on any given down then we don't deserve to win the football game and he will be second guessed especially with the field position should Oklahoma score but I think you have to figure you can at least get a couple of feet anytime you want it of course Oklahoma has beaten Colorado 12 straight Colorado has not won in Norman since 1965 Harry inside the 40 to about the 38 Steve, along with Walker. Now Michael Jones having a word or two with Perry. Just a little friendly visit. Sure. What's a Colorado-Oklahoma game without a few friendly visits? Of course, I want to commend my partner, Dave Logan. He is uh, working under the weather today. He's been sick <laughs> the last couple of days, but short of a hospital stay, Logs would not have missed a CU-Oklahoma game. Can't miss this one. Oh, 
They've got to get to about the 32. Here's Lewis. Going to be thrown for a loss. Arthur Walker hit him first and made the play. Now that's why if you're a coach, you can gamble sometimes on fourth and short in your own territory if you have a lot of faith in your defense. And the defense just made a big stand. When you get the ball up that deep, sometimes the defense will break a little bit. Certainly they did not on that series. Arthur Walker and Steed in this first quarter are making a lot of big plays. It's been a defensive struggle so far in case you missed this first quarter. Riddell. Towards the end zone and in the end zone. So Colorado is to start their fourth possession of the afternoon on the 20. They've had it there three times, once on the 32. They have yet to get a first down. Well, CU is going to have to start thinking about throwing the football a bit on first down. Now, they've been able to generate a few yards. They've been very close to breaking a couple of plays, but Oklahoma, obviously, over the years, has been one of the better defensive units in the country. Uh, no surprise playing option football. I and mean, They love this. They'd much rather play a team like Colorado than a team like Iowa State that moves people all over and dumps the football and throws 45 times a game. A couple of other scores to pass along. Maryland leads North Carolina 31-0 fourth quarter. Virginia out in front of Louisville 13-9 at the half. And Michigan leads Indiana 31-3 third quarter. And there is Eric Bieniemy with the baseball cap. You know he's frustrated, wants to play, but his leg is not quite ready yet to let him get back in there. And on top of that, his mother said no way. <laughs> we always do what our mothers tell us to do, too. Absolutely. He's a guy, though, that uh, just his presence means so very much to this team. He, he really epitomizes the heart and soul of, of this year's edition of the Buffaloes. And I know Bill was was never even thinking about leaving Eric Bieniemy back in Boulder. Good view of this 76,000, a sea of red here in Norman. And we are high atop that sea of red, and I mean high atop. On first and 10, J.J. Flanagan. Running hard across the 25 to the 27 where Scott Evans again makes the tackle, but a seven-yard pickup for J.J. But you line up in the eye formation, give it to the guy four or five yards back. Flanagan making a nice cut inside, and J.J. stronger this year, able to drag some tacklers with him after the first hit. So important, again, on first down that you gain at least four or five yards so you're operable second and third down. Second down, a long three for the Buffs. Kissick and Flanagan behind Hagen. Flanagan again. A little short of a first down. He's out to the 29. Dillard and Reggie Barnes. Dillard 77, Barnes 40. On the bottom of that pile. Flanagan taps Dillard in the head as if to say good job. Dillard playing for the injured Tom Backus. 270-pound sophomore. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. After a quarter in Norman, Colorado nothing, Oklahoma nothing. Here's something everyone worries about when flying, whether their carry-on luggage will fit. Could you put this in the overhead compartment? <laughs> How about under the seat? <laughs> So at Samsonite, we've designed carry-ons you truly can carry on, like our garment bag and suitcase in one, packed with features that make things easier to pack. At Samsonite, we'll never leave you holding the bag, proving once again that our strengths are legendary. Where should we push it to this time? Not that place again. Let's take it to budget transmission. But how far is it? It says here there's a budget transmission just up ahead. Well, let's go. It's got to be better than that last place. We have a warranty good anywhere we go. Where to, Wilma? Just keep driving. With budget transmission, we're set for life. It's Ford Truck Month. Time to unveil the new Mountain States Ford Ranger. Take Ranger at XLT Trim, Sport Wheels, Chrome Step Bumper, just $94.54, only $168 a month. 
Inside, it's loaded. Your Mountain State's Ranger is still under $9,500. That's just $168 a month. Save on super cabs and 4x4s, too. Mountain State's Ranger, $94.54, $168 a month. Hurry to your Ford dealer during truck month. Ron Zapolo and Dave Logan back in Norman, Oklahoma. And Dave, take it away. Well, you can see inside number 98, Dante Williams right over the center had such great penetration early that he got there almost before George Hemingway could secure the football. And that, of course, at least then looked to be a big play in the game. Oklahoma took over inside the, the CU 40-yard line, but the CU defensively to the occasion, and uh, they stopped Oklahoma. CU still looking for their first first down in the ball game, as you see. Well, CU has one first down on their last drive. Rushing yards, Oklahoma 43-28. Oklahoma has not completed a pass yet. Total yards are even. Third and one. Kissick, Hemingway, and Flanagan behind Hagen. Here's Flanagan. J.J.'s got the first down, out to the 31. So Colorado with their second first down, the free safety, number 19, Terry Ray, made the stop. Good job of smash-mouth football, as they say. Flanagan just getting behind a lot of white jerseys, lowering those shoulders and uh, realizing that he needed only about a foot for the first down. First and 10 from the 31. Here's Flanagan up the middle, dancing across the 40 to the 41, close to a first down. It's Casey Dillard, number 77, tripped him up. Well, they've had good success with the I formation, with Flanagan, the deep back, cuts it back early. Now he's like a water bug. Look how low he is to the ground right there, picking up an additional four or five yards. So important for CU to establish their ability to move the football on the ground early in this game. They've had problems with Oklahoma in the seven years of Bill McCartney's tenure here, and so far, so good. Big hole for Eric Kissick. He's into Oklahoma territory all the way to the OU 30. Now, this was a play, and this is a series that Bill McCartney put in with his staff, the offensive staff, the last couple of weeks. They have not run this particular scheme too many times as Darian Hagan will step back a couple of steps away from center. Kissick sneaks in behind. It almost looks like an option play, and the defense is totally fooled unless they're geared to stop the fullback right away. And that time, obviously, they weren't. 27 yards for Kissick, and a first down. Flanagan, not much room, and he's thrown for a loss. Frank Levins, number 35, hit him first. They'll give J.J. forward progress to about the 31. Not much of a push up front. You can see a stalemate as Kissick and Blevins meet right in the hole. Nowhere to run for J.J. Flanagan. Second down and 11. Blevins stuck on that nice number. Nine tackles in each of his last four ball games. Well, they say he doesn't have great speed, but he certainly has been right where he needs to be this afternoon so far. Hagan looks to throw with time. A bullet that is incomplete. M.J. Nelson was the intended receiver. Greg DeQuasi on the coverage. And it brings up a third and 11. You know, Darian Hagan's been so good so far this year, but I think sometimes people fail to remember he is still only a sophomore. And at times, no matter how good he is, he's going to play like a sophomore. What you hope is that he doesn't play like a sophomore in big, big games such as this one today. Hagan puts the football on the ground. It's loose. Oklahoma's got it. Sooner football at the Oklahoma 32. Well, this looked like a design quarterback draw. Now, I'm not sure what happens, but Hagan puts the ball down below his knees as he tries to scramble, and you can see Blevins. I believe Blevins got the strip of the football, and Oklahoma with a big, big turnover defensively. 
Belzer, number 29, the strong safety, made the recovery. Blevins on the strip. So Oklahoma's got it at their own 32. That's the first turnover in the last three games for the University of Colorado. Came at an inopportune time. Collins, the handoff to Perry. Out to about the 37, a pickup of five. Michael Jones on the tackle, second and five. Well, Oklahoma again up front getting a pretty good surge. Offensively, Leon Perry just cracking in there trying to gain some yards. They've been hurt defensively, but offensively, four of the five returning starters back for the offensive line of the Sooners. Here's Lewis, not much room, and Arthur Walker, with some help from Oakland Salavea, rides him down. It'll be third and a couple. That was Colorado's first turnover in three games there. And that's, a lot of people feel that might be the only way that Oklahoma can beat Colorado if Colorado turns the football over. Oklahoma, a little live formation of their own. Ike Lewis doing a nice job of keeping his feet moving. Actually gains about two or three yards after the initial hit. Third and a couple. The pitch to Lewis. He's got a first down before Chad Brown runs him out at the Oklahoma 43. He got just enough. With the power toss in the power eye, and Lewis does a nice job here of getting over his fallen blocker and just getting enough yards for that first down. Mike Lewis, a much heralded running back when he came out of high school, one of the top five backs in the state of Texas. And as I mentioned, not as big as Mike Gaddis, but certainly very, very quick, and he just needs a chance to play. From the 43, Tink Collins hands it off to Lewis. Big hole, and he slides down at midfield. <laughs> Six-yard pickup, second down and four. Eleven and a half minutes and counting to go in this first half. We are scoreless. You can see again why Oklahoma is running so much eye formation. You just turn around and hand it to that running back, and it takes all the pressure off your quarterback. They've had quarterback problems here this year. They haven't had a quarterback rush for 100 yards this year in any one game. That's the first time since 1983. So if you've got great running backs and you're a little shaky quarterback, go ahead and just hand it off to him. Big hole for Leon Perry. He's got a first down into Colorado territory at the buff 43. So Oklahoma, impressive on this drive on the ground. Well, this play is one tackle. As you can see from going all the way as Chad Brown gets Leon Perry by the leg. You can watch up front at the push the Oklahoma offensive linemen are getting right now. And they're controlling the initial line of scrimmage, doing a good job. First and 10 at the Colorado 43. The handoff to Lewis. Walker catches him from behind and drags him down at the 46 for a loss of three. Arthur Walker extremely active in this first half. It looked like Tink Collins had trouble with the snap and almost may have dropped. Let's see if we can see it. Collins, yeah, he almost lost the football actually bumped off the guard as Larry Medice was trying to pull and get it in front of the ball carrier. And a good job by Arthur Walker. Second down and 13 for Oklahoma. Collins throws incomplete. He was looking for Ted Long, the H-back. McLuhan was right there with Long, and Long may be shaken up. Sophomore from Waco, Texas. But Ted Long came here as a quarterback, moved to defensive back last year, and now he's back to receiver. Ten minutes to go in the half. We'll return to Norman in just a minute. This is what Carl Howard wears when he works at IBM. And this is what he wears as a volunteer fireman for the West Douglas County Fire District. IBM has supported his work at the firehouse with a grant for a personal computer. It's one of more than 450 grants we've given over the past three years to support the work of IBM volunteers in Colorado. Carl Howard, just one of the IBM people working in Colorado who are working for Colorado. Only one company could do it, and we did it. Big Sur Waterbeds has dramatically lowered prices on its entire line of waterbed bedding. 
you'll find the guaranteed lowest price on every sheet and every comforter at Big Sur. Not just the lowest price on a few irregulars that nobody wants, but the lowest price on our huge selection. Everything from muslin to designer for kale. Big Sur water beds. The best price, the best selection. And now the best is even better. Big Sur water beds. West Colfax, East Colfax, and 58th in the Valley on Furniture Row. I always thought I'd know when the right person came along. Let's party. I always thought I could tell when true love hit me. I just thought it'd be more romantic. What do you say next time we just talk? Why? Like moonlit walks. A dozen roses. Who was it that said love hurts? Mark Harmon. Worth winning. Rated PG-13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Long is back up and being escorted off the field as you look at the panoramic view of Owen Field here in Norman. Good day for football. A little windy. And if you look at the flags on the top of the stadium, you can see that the wind is brisk. And on the field, I'm sure it may have, Dave, somewhat of an effect, maybe on the passing game. Yeah, I think it might very well be tough to throw as the game progresses. They've seen some pretty good players here in this stadium. Well, that they have. Pretty good teams as well. You know, Barry Switzer made an interesting comment during the course of the week. He said, you know, my 71 team, the team that battled Nebraska for the national championship before finishing second, they'd have been beaten by 30 points by some of the teams I had in the mid and late 70s. Sure. I wonder how Jack Milburn feels about that. <laughs> Third and 13. Collins looking for all of it down the sidelines, but it's way out of bounds. He was looking for Arthur Guess. And Guess was well covered. So on fourth and 13, Oklahoma will have to punt. Boy, it is tough to change what you've been doing when you've been doing what you're doing for the last 30 years and doing it quite well, thank you. <laughs> Running the football, and then they want, to, they want to be able to throw it when it's third and long, and the, the guys that can run the option attack usually have a tough time dropping straight back and throwing the football. That's why CU's so fortunate to have a Darian Hagan. That kick off the side of the foot of Riddell and bounces down to the 37. So a nine-yard punt by Riddell. Kind of sound like a country music title. It's tough to do what you've been doing when you've been doing what you've been <laughs> That's doing. That's a lot of doing. We'll, we'll come back and figure <laughs> out that doing in Norman in just a minute. getting ready to buy or sell a home there's no substitute for experience the remax experience gets you moving remax sales associates average twice the experience of other full-time real estate agents that's one reason remax associates average three times as many sales when you're looking for experience look up to remax There's never been a better time to buy a new Chevy truck than right now during Chevron Chevrolet's giant truck liquidation sale. We're overstocked and we're going to liquidate $5 million in new Chevy trucks immediately. Don't be confused by ridiculous offers. No one sells new Chevy trucks for less. With two-wheel drives starting at $59.88 and Chevy 4x4s as low as $89.88. With these low prices and 2% financing every day, I say with confidence, if I can't beat any deal on a new Chevy, I'll give you $2,000 cash. The giant truck liquidation sale, Chevron Chevrolet, I-25, and the Bowler Exit. Central banks believe if you want to make a difference in Colorado's future, get involved. We need to find our best prospects and make certain they end up in Colorado. We're looking good for a Major League Baseball team, so let's go out and get one. Sure, a new ballpark would cost about $100 million, but it will create 700 new jobs and bring in something like $68 million per year. In this economy, I'd call that kind of investment a diamond in the rough. Central banks in business for Colorado. On first and 10 from the 36, Hagen, the pitch to Flanagan, across the 40, out to the 42, where a fine open field tackle by Terry Ray, the free safety. A pretty good execution of the option. The free safety is the most important man in an option attack when you're defensing a guy on the pitch. Now, here comes Terry Ray. If he doesn't make that tackle, J.J. Flanagan is down the sideline for some big yards. You've got to have two safeties, and Oklahoma and Colorado certainly do, 
who are capable of making tackles one-on-one -on -one when you face that option attack football. Second down and five for the Buffs. Hemingway, a big hole up the middle into Oklahoma territory, down to the Sooner 44-yard line. A 16-yard pickup for Hemingway and a first down. See, Ron, this is the same play that they got Eric Kissick into the secondary. Watch him take two steps back. Here comes the fullback. Now, he is through the initial line of scrimmage almost before Oklahoma can adjust. They get used to playing the option. The linebackers start to flow. You wait for Hagen to have the ball, all of a sudden, fullback is, is by it. Very, very tough play to defend. Colorado on the move at the Oklahoma 44, 8.55 to go in this first half. Hagen keeps it. Inside the 40, down to the 37 for the third straight play. Ray, the free safety, made the tackle, but a seven-yard pickup by Darian. And a good, quick decision by Hagen. These are plays that earlier in the year, Darian Hagen scores on. He zips through the line. Here comes Ray again. At free safety, he's going to have to make a lot of tackles in this contest today. But Darian Hagen with a nice cut, a quick cut. He sharply gets right over left tackle for a game of seven. Second down and three. Hemingway pushing the pile. And he's got a first down at the Oklahoma 33. See, offensive linemen love this style of football. You just line up there. You know what the snap count is. You rock back. Where's the guy in front of me in a red helmet? Wham. Come Boom. off. Knock him. Try to knock him down. Didn't get up. Knock somebody else down. You've got a fullback. And George Hemingway is 230 pounds. He'll knock somebody down. Push the pile. you got bodies all over each other. They love it. You're getting pumped up. They love it. You're, you're frothing at the mouth. I'm just glad I'm not field. an offensive lineman. <laughs> First and 10 for the Buffs at the 33. Hagan, the pitch to Flanagan. Flanagan with room on the sideline, and he's tripped up again by Terry Ray at the Oklahoma 26. Ray has made four straight tackles. Seven-yard pickup for J.J. is Colorado getting good yardage on every first down. Well, this is what Colorado couldn't do in previous years, and that's pitch the ball successfully. Now, Flanagan, once he, he's just got to run right here. No, no time to do that. He's got to run as fast as he can for that angle and force Ray to meet him at the pass. Good job by Hagan, pitching the ball, nice catch by Flanagan. Second three for Colorado, it's their deepest penetration of the day. Here's Flanagan, stacked up right at the 25 by the middle of that Oklahoma line. So it'll be third and short. We're under, under seven minutes to go in this first half, we are scoreless. It's obvious right now that Colorado's game plan coming in, and, and yes, they'd like to mix it with a few passes, but the Buffaloes believe they can run the ball against Oklahoma. Not all the time, and maybe not even consistently, but they believe they can move the ball on the ground, and obviously that's what they're best at. It's third and one. Colorado has to get to the 23, so it's about a yard and a half. Hagan keeps it. And he should have a first down at the 22. It is a first down for Colorado. Wayne Dixon, the left end, ran him out. But the last two times, third and fourth and short, it's been the fullback. Nice fake to Flanagan. Now, Hagan making that read. You can see the corner slide out for the pitch man. Knows right where the first down marker is. Now here's a case where CU really has struggled the last few years. Since 1985, CU has scored 20 points total against Oklahoma. Last year, last time they were in Norman, excuse me, two years ago, twice inside the 10, they come away with nothing. Imperative that they take advantage of scoring opportunities and, frankly, with touchdowns against a team like OU. From the 22 on first and 10, Hagen cuts it up, gets only two as he's down to the 20 by Joe Bowden. Bowden, the backup, strong sideline back. Pickup of two, second and eight. You can see the action again. Nice move by Bowden. Has not had a chance to play very much this year, substituting for James Good. Does a great job of swinging around and making sure he gets hold of Hagen and getting to the ground. Nebraska leads Iowa State, 14-7, second quarter. Oklahoma State leads Missouri, 7-3 second quarter. This one is stopped before it is started. 
Hagan looked like he might have been calling an audible there, Dave. And it's very noisy up here. They lay a game on the Bucks. These 76,000 are into it, and it may be tough to hear down there. That'll make it second and 13. Back at the 25. Colorado does use a lot of audibles, and it looked like, Ron, you're exactly right. 80% of the time when they come to the line of scrimmage, Darian Hagan has one of three plays in mind. He will check off, and obviously that time just took a bit too long. And down to this closed end of the stadium, which see you uh, on their way to it, it is tough to hear. Hagan looking to throw. Incomplete, in and out of the hands of Hemingway. Bowden, number 45, was with Hemingway. Sets up a third and 13. The field goal kickers may play a role today. R.D. Lasher for Oklahoma and Ken Culbertson for Colorado. This is the same play that Hemingway made the one-handed catch in the first quarter. It's got to be a little bit wider. See, in that defense, you force that inside linebacker to cover the swing man. So make him run. Stretch him as far as you can. Hemingway a little bit too close to the middle that time. You can see the time in the lower right-hand corner. No score. And off to Flanagan, J.J. with room inside the 15 down to the 13. He's going to be about a yard short. And Bill McCartney will be present, presented with another decision as Eric Bieniemy looks on. See Eric Bieniemy telling J.J. Flanagan, cover up the football. It's fourth and one again. <laughs> I'm not so sure that I don't kick it here, but Bill McCartney... Evidently, he's going to call timeout and think about it. 5.16 to go. Come on back. Find out what Colorado will do on fourth down. Speaking 4x4, four four, one name is all you need to remember. Courtesy, get higher rebates and lower prices on all 90 model 4x4s four four right when you need it most. New Fords from $65.95 and 4x4s four only $11,573. Rebates as high as $12,50. Rugged 4x4 four four Troopers only $11,988. Our pricing is based on volume. The more we sell, the higher the rebates. 300 trucks, 4x4s four four and vans at our new giant location. Courtesy Ford, C470 and South Broadway. Yeah, I put new brakes in my car last night. Yeah? Did you go to Meineke? No. Why? Imagine how much better you'd feel if you'd come to Meineke. Our under-the-car specialist would have thoroughly inspected your brake system, then installed the right brakes at a great Meineke price. So when you need new brakes, remember... Don't worry. They're not laughing at you. It's smart to come to Meineke. Again and again, KG Menswear keeps you coming back. He's back for a Hager Wool Blend Sport Coat, tailored in a herringbone weave for everyday wear, only $79.99. He's back for an Imperial by Hager Sport Coat, tailored from 100% wool and classic Shetland patterns. They're just $99.99. KG keeps you coming back again and again and again. KG Menswear, great clothes for everything you do. Ron Zapolo and Dave Logan back in Norman, Oklahoma. Colorado with a fourth and one, and they will attempt the field goal. Ken Culbertson is on. They'll spot it at the 20. It'll be a 30-yard attempt. Campbell will hold. And it is good. Culbertson snuck it in the lower left-hand corner, and Colorado is on the board first. Well, Bill McCartney called a timeout, and I think contemplating going for it on fourth down, there is a lot of wind here. And you can see the kick by Culbertson barely made it through the left upright, so nothing is going to be a gimme, even from 30 yards away this afternoon. I think a good decision there to get some points on the board. Your defense has played terrific football. They've been able to keep Oklahoma out of the end zone, and you don't want to come away in a situation like that where you've driven the ball some 50 yards and then get no points on the board right before halftime. Culbertson now 7 of 10 on the season. He gives his team the first points of the day. Colorado, an impressive drive. 50 yards, 11 plays, taking nearly five minutes. Culbertson, a low line drive kick. 
I tell you, when he hit it, I thought he missed it. You know what? I did, too. So I was afraid to call because I thought that he did hit it left. Dewell Brewer, number six, and Otis Taylor, number 11, deep for the Sooners. You can see how windy it is. Culbertson has had the ball already blow off the tee. And he'll now hold it. Yep. Wayne really can play havoc with you, especially in the passing game and the kicking game, obviously. Of course, these two teams run the ball so effectively that it, it doesn't hurt them too much. It hurts Colorado, obviously, more than Oklahoma. And it, it'll hurt the team that gets behind in the second half and must throw the ball to catch up. Albertson got all of that one, drives it right out of the end zone. That might have been, that might have, that field goal might have been good right there. So Oklahoma will take over on their 20. With 5.13 to go in this first quarter, Colorado out in front, 3 to nothing. Now, if you're the Sooners, you'd love to move the football down and have a chance to score, but of paramount importance, you do not want to make a mistake this deep in your own end with five minutes to go in the first half. Your defense has played great, and the Sooner defense has really answered the challenge. Offensively, you want to make sure that you don't give Colorado great field position right before halftime. From the 20 on first and 10. Collins runs down the sideline and is nailed at the 19 by Alfred Williams. What a shot he gave to Tink Collins. Well, Tink Collins will take one right in the chops. I'll tell you this, if he pitches the football, he's got a chance for a big play. Open Salavea did a terrific job of penetrating from his tackle position, knocked off Leon Perry, therefore Tink Collins had nowhere to pitch it. So give uh, Williams the, the credit for the big hit, but give Salavea the credit for knocking off that pitch man. Loss of one, second and 11 for Oklahoma. Collins wants to throw. And it's incomplete. He was looking for Adrian Cooper, the tight end out of Denver South High School. Dave, you made the point. When you don't throw, it's tough to all of a sudden decide you'd like to throw. I mean, it's nice to practice, and, and certainly when you run seven on seven in drills and nobody's tackling you, it's easy to complete some throws. But for a team that has relied so heavily on the option attack, to drop back and throw it in that fashion is virtually impossible. It's a big play here. It's third and 11, Oklahoma into the wind. If they don't get that first down, CU should get. Great field position. Reverse. Here's a reverse to Long. Hitting down at the 24. Bruce Young hit him first. Got some help from McGee, but he'll be at least six yards short of a first down. Canavis McGee saved not only a first down, but maybe a touchdown on this reverse. Canavis McGee and one other buff player, the only guys in white jerseys on that half of the field. McGee holds his position, and he forces Guest to turn inside where he's got more help. McGee and Young made the play as Riddell punting for the fifth time. Campbell is deep. He stands at his own 40. Jeff is out to the 48. And that's where Colorado will start. Arthur Guest made the stop. You know, Ron, little things make up a football game. And, and Jeff Campbell running as fast as he could to catch that punt prevents the ball from bouncing. It may very well have bounced all the way to the 20 yard line. So he saves his team 27 yards. Now, it doesn't look like much because he catches the ball and gets wiped out in about two yards. But just the fact that he catches the football, which is the, the vital point for any punt return man. 350 to go in this first half. It has been a defensive struggle. The only points, a 30-yard field goal by Ken Culbertson. Of course, Colorado home next week against you-know-who, Nebraska. And this game today may very well be the biggest in school's history. Should see you win this game, next week will be bigger than this week. Gary Barnett, the quarterback coach, along with the two backup quarterbacks, Charles Johnson and Mark Walters. Bill McCartney over, having a word. Colorado has time, 350. They've got two timeouts left. Great field position, their own 47. 
Hagan's got it. Keeps it. Hagan with plenty of room down the sidelines, and he's finally caught from behind at the 14-yard line by Jason Belser. Biggest play of the ball game, and a first down for Colorado. Two, two key points. Watch the block by the fullback on this play. I hope we can see it as Eric Kissick right there cuts down the defensive end. Now Hagan doing a good job with the ball in front of freezing the cornerback. See the, the pitch move. When you still have the option man, let's see if we can see J.J. Flanagan. Watch Flanagan stay right with Hagan. See that little move right there? Very subtle, but it forces Kevin Thompson, the defensive corner, to play the pitch man. 39-yard run as Flanagan takes it inside the five down to the four. That'll be close to another first down. DeQuazy, number 49, the strong safety, made the stop on J.J. Colorado in the last five minutes of the first half. Starting to make their move as they'll measure here. 39 yards for J.J. Flanagan. Hopefully we can take another look at uh, the option play with Darian Hagan. Once you herd a team to the outside, obviously having a tendency to flow that way a much, much quicker. And Flanagan has really been terrific, lined up in the eye formation, running between the tackles this afternoon. Okay, the big play, or the big series, might have been after the field goal when Colorado held Oklahoma three and out at the 20, got the ball back with great field position. And Canavis McGee stopping almost single-handedly that reverse, forcing Guest to cut up inside where there was help. Second and goal. The ball is at the four. Here's Kissick. He's got a first down. Colorado's got it first and goal at the Oklahoma two. I think Colorado right now clearly proving that with so many options and so many weapons, you can stop them for a while. You can shut down people from time to time, but it's very, very difficult to monitor everybody. They've got too many options to choose from. First and goal. Hemingway down near the goal line. He's not in, but he's close. It'll, they'll mark it inside the one. Colorado has three downs to blast it in. 2-12 and counting in this first half. 3-0 Colorado. Hagan's got it. The pitch. Touchdown, J.J. Flanagan. I'll tell you what, this, this will be a play that the Adams apples of every CU coach in the press box fluctuated about 16 inches. Hagan literally pitches this one from almost on the ground. That might have been over the rim on a free throw. One of the more adventurous pitchers in the young career of Darian Hagan. He pitched that over an Oklahoma player almost falling down, and those are the kinds of plays that Oklahoma has made so many times in the past. Culbertson makes the conversion, 151 to go in the first half, and Colorado suddenly has struck for 10 points, and they have established themselves here at Oklahoma. No disrespect to any quarterback that's ever played for Colorado before, but this kid is the difference in how the option attack is run. He pitches the ball literally over Kevin Thompson's head while Thompson has a beat on him and fallen flat on his face. Knowing that J.J. Flanagan is going to be all by himself because Thompson is the cover guy. Tom Thompson is the corner who came to Hagan. That is a terrific play, and a few can make it in college football. And a play that scared a lot of Colorado people <laughs> that are here in Norman. Ooh. Five plays, 53 yards, the big play, the 39-yard run by Hagan as Colorado out in front, 10-0, 151 to go in this first half. Ball 
All of a sudden, that ball came flying out of that pile. Everybody's heart. It was like he was shooting a free throw from his knees. Got to get it up over one guy and to the rim. He's a sophomore. He's not worried. He's never been here before. <laughs> he doesn't know from anything. Maybe too young to be worried. Yeah. Line drive pick by Culbertson through the end zone. So the Sooners will take it on the 20. Darian Hagan throws this left-handed, as you can see, over Kevin Thompson to a wide-open J.J. Flanagan. The really scary thing about that is where Hagan was, you know, it's like a pass that could be picked off and run 100 yards. But the important thing is for a quarterback to know how to execute the option and, and to realize that if I can just get the ball out there somehow, That's there's nobody to cover my pitch cut. Oklahoma now down by 10. Lewis twists and turns and fights for about five. Michael Jones, the senior from San Diego, made the stop. Jones, the leading tackler on the Buffs. Minute 35 and counting. Colorado is six point favorite. It's been 19 years since they've come in here as a favorite. Hand off to Perry, nothing there. Gary Howe, number 95 in the game, along with Arthur Walker. And Chad Brown were all there. No game. Third and five. And a timeout. So Called by Colorado. Yeah, Colorado, I think, very, very wisely going to force Oklahoma to come up with something on third and five. Otherwise, punt the football into the wind, and who knows what can happen in the last minute or so. Well, Arthur Walker, has he had a first half or well, what? Well, he's had a great year. Senior tackle out of Houston, Texas. Much stronger this year. Gained some 20 pounds. And... He really has played as well as anybody up front. Yeah, his stock has risen. But this is a defense that's been able to keep the Buffaloes in every game. Now, offensively, they put so many points on the board that they really haven't had to rely much on the defense. But today, defensively, the, the, the tone of the game, the tempo of this contest has been set initially by the Colorado defense. Colorado defensively has just shut Oklahoma down in the first half. Oklahoma has not been shut out since 1982 when USC did it. Collins throws it incomplete. He was looking for long. Bounced off his right hand and with a minute three to go, Oklahoma's got a punt again. And when you don't have much success throwing the ball, and you haven't had a good year throwing the ball, these passes become tougher to complete as time goes on. Tink Collins, all he has to do is just dink it out there. Throws it over the head of the receiver. See Bill McCartney give Bruce Young a high five when he came off the field? But he's high-fiving a lot of guys. Yeah, he is. And high-fiving guys all year. Riddell giving his right leg a workout. Campbell from the 40. Jeff across midfield in a late flag. As Campbell made it all the way to the Oklahoma 47. But tell you, you, usually when it's thrown like that, it's a clip. I, I didn't see any white jerseys in the midst of the three red jerseys that were on the ground, but let's wait and see. You called it. Clip. 55 seconds to go in the first half, and with this penalty, Colorado might be inclined to Run out the clock and go into the locker room with a 10 to nothing lead. And Bill McCartney will tell them, fellas, we haven't won anything yet. Got another half of football to play. It's very true. Ball is back at the Colorado 32. It's the one great thing about this Colorado offense, you never know. Flanagan to the 35. Clock is running. 40 seconds. Well, 
Well, this Colorado team has to be thrilled going into the locker room with a 10-point lead. Well chronicled their problems here in Norman in the past. Flanagan again, he's out to the 40. Number 56, James Baldwin and 78, Scott Evans made the stop and that should be the final play of the first half. A half that Colorado can feel very good about as Eric Bieniemy walks out with his hand raised up in the air as if to say, that's my team. We are at halftime. Colorado 10, Oklahoma nothing. of Motor Trend magazine road tested a lot of cars before the Mitsubishi Galant. They road tested a lot of cars after it, but no other car was so well conceived, so well crafted, so thoroughly satisfying to drive. And that is why they marked the occasion in the most significant way they could. They named the Mitsubishi Galant Motor Trend Import Car of the Year. Test drive the 1990 Galant today at your Denver area Mitsubishi Motors dealer. Are you tired of paying too much for a Christmas tree? Trying to cram a tree into the trunk of your compact car? Cleaning up the mess? And not getting a fresh tree? There must be an easier way. We take the hassle out of Christmas. A fresh tree delivered right to your door. Cut to size and set up if you like. Trees from 4 feet to 20 feet. Priced from $25 to $85, depending on type and size. Perfect for home or business. A limited number of quality trees is available in each delivery area. So you must order now and avoid the Christmas rush. This is a limited time offer. You must call now for best delivery dates and prices will increase closer to Christmas. Visa and MasterCard welcome. Order now and receive a free Christmas ornament and pamphlet on caring for your tree. Call 1-800-642-7400. Set up in your home and tree stands available for small extra charge. For best delivery dates, call now. 1-800-642-7400. I'm talking with Steve Dowson, president of Empire Oldsmobile Honda, to see how the best dealer in town campaign is going. We've dealt thousands of dollars in savings already, and sales are up. Are you the best dealer in town, or is your brother Dean at Empire Nissan? Because I have the lowest overhead, and I'm off the so-called car row, I must give the greater discounts, plus dealing poker hands to everyone with chances to win $5,000 makes me the best dealer in town. Empire Olds Honda, four blocks west of Monaco on East Colfax. First half highlights, which have basically been all Colorado as they are out in front, 10 to nothing. They struck quickly late in the second quarter on a field goal by Ken Culbertson. And then a drive culminated by a one-yard touchdown run by J.J. Flanagan, which was one of the more exciting and adventurous one-yard touchdown runs we have ever seen. You see the kick, and that thing barely sneaks in the left side of the upright. That was the first score of the afternoon, making it CU 3, Oklahoma nothing. This play really set up the touchdown run. You'll see the option play, Eric Kissick and Mike Pritchard. Kissick with a great block on the outside. Now watch the little subtle fake right here as he freezes Kevin Thompson. Hagan off to the races, a 40-yard gain. And again, Darian Hagan really with an exceptional second quarter performance and this run as you mentioned may be the most exciting one yard run the pitch by Hagen on his way down and over Kevin Thompson with the left hand into the waiting arms of JJ Flanagan who skips into the end zone by himself may have been his uh, best pass of the day I mean he threaded the needle on that pitch first downs Colorado eight to five you can see the rushing yards the passing yards Oklahoma has not yet completed a pass total yards at CU everything else about equal Flanagan has 14 carries 65 yards Hagan has 10 carries for 60 yards Perry eight carries 35 yards Lewis eight carries 25 yards Dave if Oklahoma is going to throw and get back in the game you wonder if they'll stick with Tink Collins who was 0 for 6 yeah I think they might make a move uh, quarterback wise in the third quarter should see you jump ahead this is a big big drive obviously for the Sooners not only to punch out field position, but 
they're not in a situation where they have to throw the ball a lot. They're only 10 points down. Two scores right back in the football game. I'm sure that's how they're thinking. But they have got to make something happen early here in the third quarter. They'll be going against the wind, which will be certainly tough to throw the ball. Brewer 6 and Taylor 11 deep. And Brewer will down it in the end zone. So Oklahoma takes over from their 20 as we start the third quarter here in Norman. Gary Gibbs in his first year, longtime Oklahoma assistant, very good player for the Sooners as well. They have made a change. Number 10, Steve Collins trots on the field, the freshman from Ennis, Texas, 6'2", 196 pounds, three of six on the year for 18 yards through the air for Steve Collins. So he'll start the second half. The pitch to Lewis. Nowhere to go, and he's thrown for a loss by Canavis McGee. So whether it's Steve or Tink, Collins having a tough time at the helm. I'm sure Colorado aware of the fact that Oklahoma will come out here in the second half and, and really attempt to run the football. They're not in a desperate situation in which they have to throw the ball. Now, Steve Collins is a bit bigger than Tink Collins. He'll break more tackles. He's probably faster straight away. So I'm sure you'll see him get involved in the option attack as well. Second and 12. This is Lewis. Nowhere to go. Arthur Walker wraps him up at the most a gain of a yard. And now Walker will be flagged for unnecessary roughness. And that hurts. Well, that's a silly, silly mistake. Good job initially getting rid of the offensive lineman, Arthur Walker, number 83 right in the middle of your picture. Now, he, Ike Lewis has stood up right there. The whistle clearly blown, and Arthur Walker just flung him to the ground. See, that's the kind of thing that sometimes can get an offense going. Personal foul on the defense. First down. You've got him down 10 nothing. You certainly don't want to make a silly mistake, and you see Bill McCartney talking to an official. I don't think Bill thrilled with that call. Maybe he felt that Lewis was going ahead, that it was a late whistle, whatever. You'll talk to Bill about that tomorrow night. First and 10 from the 35. Collins. wonder if they'll call that a pass or a lateral. Whatever, they're calling it incomplete. Oakland Salavia is down, very slow getting up. I tell you, I think this was going to be a double pass. I think it was, too. And Steve Collins just underthrew the intended receiver. Unable to, to make the play. I don't know if that was just a bad throw or a, an intended bounce pass. As long as the receiver would be behind the quarterback, you could bounce it out there and he could still throw it. Second down and 10. This is Lewis. Not much. Couple out to the 37. Terry Johnson made the stop. It'll be third and eight. Sooners right now really searching for something that they can get their hands on, their teeth into offensively. Are we better in the eye? Do we want to run the option? They certainly don't want to throw it too much, but they haven't been able to hang their hat on much offensively so far today, and now they're in a third long situation again. And they're operating into what looks to be a very stiff win. They'll have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter. Collins, incomplete. He was looking for Adrian Cooper, Terry Johnson. With the hit, and Terry may be shaken up. Again, you don't throw the ball much, and as a young quarterback, you have a tendency to lock right onto your receiver, and that's exactly what Steve Collins did. Play action fake to Lewis, I and mean, he looked right at Adrian Cooper all the way across the field, and obviously the linebackers watching Steve Collins' eyes, they're able to break on the football much quicker. Riddell, who hasn't exactly had a shining day, he had one punt for nine yards, on for his seventh punt of the afternoon. Campbell is back at the Colorado 27. This one's a good one. Campbell calls for and makes the fair catch at the Colorado 26. 13-15 to go in this third quarter. Colorado 10, Oklahoma nothing. When this phone rings, someone's in trouble. Hello, Roseanne Chavez is here to help. Roseanne works for IBM, but also is a volunteer for the Longmont Coalition for Women in Crisis 
where she answers calls and provides advocacy and counseling services. So when people need help, there will be someone here to listen. We can work it out. Supporting a crisis line. It's one way IBM people working in Colorado are working for Colorado. Three, two, one, happy new year! 1990 model Morgan Spas are already here. Wait a minute, it's not New Year's yet. No, we're just making a lot of noise till all the 89 model spas are gone. You'll find huge savings on all 89 Morgan Spas in stock. All include Morgan's famous 10-year warranty, backed by Morgan's 28-year reputation. Plus 90 days same as cash or payments as low as $68 a month. Start our new year with a... Come to the 89 model spa closeout at the Morgan Spa store near you. The word for the day is credit. So I was looking at this great little red convertible. You know, the kind that... Well, anyway, this Neanderthal of a salesman says, Honey, have the mister come in so they can work out the details. They can work out the details on the car I'm going to buy? I mean, come on. I've got my own credit. Neanderthal. A visit to Sus Pontiac GMC Daihatsu is not a trip into the past. 76,000 strong. They haven't given up here in Norman. Their team trails by 10. The pitch by Hagen. Back to Flanagan. J.J. with room. Fine open field tackle by DeQuasi at the 30. Flag is down. Back at the 27. Flanagan picked up four. Haven't seen much of this this year. Power pitch and Flanagan off a nice break. Cuts back early. The penalty is going to be against Colorado. And J.J. Flanagan got up holding his leg. Something we've rarely seen. Darian Hagen in the game in the third quarter. Doesn't happen often. Holding. Offense. First down. He's usually done for the day at this point. So a couple of mistakes here in the third quarter by Colorado. The personal foul by Walker and now the hold. And the ball is back on the 16 where it is first and 20. Hagan is hit and thrown for a loss back at the 13. Chris Wilson, the sophomore linebacker from Richardson, Texas. Colorado will now have a second and 23 back at the 13. Well, Chris Wilson has been the leading tackler for the Sooners, but he's played inside linebacker. And until this week, that's the spot he's manned. He, they moved him to the outside when James Good got hurt. That time, just avoiding the block, it really got to Hagen before Hagen could make a decision as to whether to pitch it or to duck inside. Colorado started at the 26. They're now on their own 13. Hagen's out to the 19. It's a six-yard pickup. It'll be third and 17. Reggie Barnes, number 40, brought down Hagen. Darian doing a good job again with the option. Kissick a nice block inside. Hagen cuts it up, picks up positive yards. Now defensively for Oklahoma, third down and 16. Boy, you can really do a lot of things. You can blitz. You can force the inside linebackers to shoot early. You want to, if you can, take the football out of the hands of Darian Hagen and force him to either pitch it or give it to somebody else. Hagen looking for room. Makes a fine run, but he's going to be short of the first down. He's out to the 31. Jason Bells with a strong safety made the stop, but he's about five yards short, so Colorado will kick it away. I don't think Darian Hagan ever intended to pitch this football at all. He was going to keep this right from the start. Cuts back, makes people miss. Tough to pick up 16 yards virtually by yourself when you cut back against the drain, but at least you give your team a chance to punt the football. Dewell Brewer is deep. Tom Ruin backs him up to the Oklahoma 12. He's out to the 17. John Bowman, number 81, one of the last men off the pile. So Oklahoma, after an exchange of punts, has the football on their own 17. They trail 10-0. 10.47 to go in this third quarter. 
Oklahoma has not been shut out since USC did the trick back in 1982. Well, before this game, Colorado had not led in an Oklahoma game since 1976. That's amazing. They hadn't even had the lead, so this is uh, this certainly a position that uh, Colorado not familiar with, and conversely, Oklahoma not used to being behind either. Of course, Oklahoma has beaten Colorado 12 straight. They have beaten them 19 of 22 here in Norman. Colorado has not won in Norman since 1965. I think the plight of Oklahoma offensively just goes to show you that, yes, it's, it's nice to have great running backs. You need those big folks up front to knock people down. But if you're an option attack, you better have a trigger man. You better have a guy that makes the right decisions. And if you're going to be a great team, you must have a guy that can complete a throw here and there. And they've got two freshmen. And neither of them possessed uh, with the ability that Charles Thompson had. Well, they're not, they're not seasoned. They haven't had a chance to play yet. And until they get the opportunity, then you're going to be limited offensively with respect to what you can do. Perry takes it out to the 20. So it's a pickup of four. It'll be second and six. Marcellus Elder, number 97 in the game for Colorado. Collins. Cuts it upfield himself, and a pretty run. Makes a great cut. He's got room down the sidelines. All the way down to the Colorado 33, where McGee and James finally caught up with him. A 45-yard run by freshman Steve Collins. Biggest play of the day for Oklahoma. But as we talked about, Steve Collins is bigger than Tink Collins. He's got the ability, because of his size, to break more tackles. You see him pull away from Chad Brown. Good block on McLuhan, and he's got very, very good straight-ahead speed. Now, David Gibbs does a terrific job of turning him back inside, and nice pursuit by Canavis McGee and Tim James as well. But this guy, once he gets to the corner, he'll break arm tackles all day long. From the 33, Perry on a dive inside the 30 to the 29. Pick up a four, second and six. Here's another look at Steve Collins. And a good job blocking up front as they knock down white jerseys. Chad Brown has to make that tackle right there. Well, Arthur Guest made a heck of a block. To keep it from being a big play. And I, I think had Steve Collins continued to run, he very well might have outrun the entire CU team. I thought for a moment there, he might score. Second and six. The pitch to Lewis. A hole up the middle inside the 25 to the 24. Chad Brown made the stop. It'll be third and one. Deepest penetration of the day for Oklahoma. Well, you, you've given Oklahoma new life. Actually, they've helped themselves, and, and you see a, a, a new spirit coming off the line of scrimmage. They're, they're bouncing back. Ike Lewis running very, very hard. You've got your offensive lineman very much involved in the game, and they realize now that with one score, they're very much in this football game. Third and one. Perry hit behind the line of scrimmage by Canavis McGee. He didn't get there. It'll be fourth down. And now Gary Gibbs will have a decision to make. I don't think there's any decision here against the win. You have got to go for it. At least I would think. If it's a field goal, it'll be 42 yards. And they're going to go for it. They've got to get to the 23. It's a clear two yards. You can see the ball right on the 25. And Oklahoma wants a timeout. They're going to think this one over. We'll take a break. 8.13 to go. Oklahoma with a fourth and two. The KG Menswear Fall Suit and Sport Coat Sale. Because every man deserves the best. And now you can afford it. Wear Johnny Carson suits, tailored in the USA in fine wool blends for a look that works as hard as you do, from $169.99. And save on preferred stock suits, styled for success in year-round wool blends, only $199.99. Now, during our fall suit and sport coat sale, KG Menswear, great clothes for everything you do. Harry, if you don't want to end up in court, you better send a child to court. I'm calling about your son, Grover. 
You better send money. His ski trip's over. Send the money now, you dig? Or we won't make our next gig. To send someone money fast, come to Western Union. We'll make sure it gets to any of our 13,000 locations, usually in 15 minutes or less. Cruising! Western Union, the fastest way to send money. If you've got yourself a car, and you've got yourself a house, you could be on your way to some very nice savings. Because with Allstate Homeowners Insurance and an excellent driving record, you could save up to 15% on your auto insurance. And 15% could mean big money for all the important little things. What a day. What a day. The Allstate Auto Advantage. Another reason. A member of the Sears Financial Network. It's fourth and two for Oklahoma. The ball on the Colorado 25 on the left hash mark. Perry and Lewis are the running backs. Now if you're Gary Gibbs with the wide side of the field to the left, you probably want to run some sort of option play to the left side with Steve Collins having the ability to keep it or pitch it. You called it. He's got it. I don't think he got enough. Michael Jones made the tackle, and I think that Collins is at least a yard short. Michael Jones tells you all you need to know. First down, Colorado. That's a great job by the linebackers. The initial surge, you'll see Joel Steed inside the Oklahoma backfield. Here comes Michael Jones, and here comes Chad Brown. Both inside linebackers right where they needed to be, and Steve Collins had the hole, but he just couldn't quite get there quick enough to get the two yards. Michael Jones might be one of the unsung heroes on this football team. That was a big play. Was it ever? Hagan, the pitch to Flanagan. JJ's run down at the 27. Nice play by Belzer, 29, and Barnes, 40, as they combine to make the stop. Give him three, it'll be second and seven. This could have been a very big play as JJ Flanagan stumbles a bit. He sees the opening, the lead block by Pritchard, he just can't get there fast enough. Good job of closing by Belzer and Franks. Boy, that, that stop on fourth down, at least for the moment, is taking this crowd just right out of the game. The Flanagan bounces off one tackle to the 30 and maybe a little more. Terry Ray and Frank Blevins combined to bring J.J. down. It'll be third and a long three. 7-10 left in the third quarter. Colorado out in front, 10 to nothing. Good look at Flanagan. So you talk to J.J. Flanagan, you can't help but like him. You talk about a bubbly personality. Colorado on his third and three, wants to talk it over, and they take a timeout. Darian Hagan comes over, talks to Gary Barnett. But you can see how the, the game has changed over the years. Colorado, the last few years, has had no success, or, or virtually none, running the football. And now they throw one pass, they completed one pass the entire day for 15 yards. You can take a look at the stats, 204 yards rushing for CU. Oklahoma at 147, and the biggest portion of that in the last drive but Colorado coming into the game, as we told you early, really felt they could run the football against Oklahoma. And that is a marked improvement just by the statement alone. And they've been able to, not, again, consistently, but they've been able to punch out a few first downs, come up with a couple of big plays, and we'll have an opportunity right here to add on to the big playlist. They've made just enough to keep them on top. This was the game that, just looking down here, just thinking about Sal and Nessie, that he was pointing to, that he wanted to be here, and I'm sure Sal's thoughts, Sal's vision has gone through the minds of all the CU players last night and this morning and this afternoon. Third and four. There's the pitch to Flanagan. J.J.'s got a first down as he steps out at the Colorado 36. 
Hagan did a great job on the pitch. Well, here's an indication of how a sophomore quarterback can play like he's a senior. Oklahoma really shoot. Watch him shoot the inside linebackers. Now, Flanagan is going to be wide. Hagan does a terrific job of pitching the ball again left-handed, drawing the, the take man to him. And that's a play that I think with most quarterbacks, the defense stands a pretty good chance to win. John Bowman, 81, did a good job of sealing on the outside to give Flanagan enough to get the first down. Here's the pitch to J.J. Nothing there, and he slides down at the 35. Loss of one, it'll be second and 11. Belzer, the strong safety, sophomore out of Kansas City, made the stop. The power toss again. This time, Oklahoma wins the battle. Does a good job of keeping their feet. See Belzer out in front. Also, Stacy Dillard, the big sophomore tackle. 6'7 and 285 pounds. They don't long for size down here. That's the truth. 6'10 to go in the third quarter. Flanagan around the corner. Into Oklahoma territory at the Sooner 49. Dillard made the tackle, but a 16-yard pickup. And Flanagan may be shaken up. Or maybe he's just got the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, this is a little dose of OU football against Oklahoma. The quick pitch. The lead block by Pritchard. As he knocks, he gets just enough of the corner to knock him off stride. Belzer can't make the play. Flanagan, with the great speed, can outrun most of the pursuit. Actually, almost runs out of his shoes. Yeah, he's hurting right now. They just, uh, he's going to come out. I don't know, Dave, if he fell on the ball or whatever. He must be nearing 100 yards. He had 65 at the half. He got 16 right there. I'll tell you one thing. He's probably not, I mean, definitely he is not used to playing this much football. The guy that uh, usually plays about half of the offensive plays with Eric the enemy. Matt Bell, the redshirt freshman from Thomas Jefferson High School, is in the ball game. First and 10 for Colorado. They're in Oklahoma territory at the Sooner 49. Hemingway lost the football. Oakland and Colorado got it back. Sometimes good fortunes just ride with you, don't they? Years past, that ball would have bounced up, and somebody in a red jersey would have caught it in midair, and if not run for a touchdown, they'd have been down about the 20-yard line. When you were playing, yes, that would have happened. <laughs> but this is a different team. Uh, you don't a, have to remind me. A certainly. different era. <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> a different time. Second down and nine. Hagan. And it's intercepted at the 12-yard line. He was looking for Mike Pritchard, but Kevin Thompson, number 22, stepped in front and made the interception. But well, Darian Hagan throws this ball as he avoids the rush. Watch him step up and now get rid of it before he goes down. Kevin Thompson with excellent coverage. He was tied for the Big 8 lead last year in interceptions. He deflected 12 passes. He's a very, very heady player and right with Mike Pritchard step for step. If, you, if you're going to throw an interception, the wrong excuse me, I guess it's good to throw it all the way down the field and act like it's a punt and allow that defense to go ahead and play. Good point. Second turnover of the day for Colorado. Oklahoma's got it. Less than five minutes to go in the third quarter. On the reverse, they're going to throw off the reverse. It's long. Throwing incomplete for Adrian Cooper. McLuhan was with Cooper. Uh, Oklahoma just having a terrible time trying to throw the football. Well, he told you Ted Long, when he was hurt early in the first half, came to Oklahoma as a quarterback. Such a good athlete. They moved him to defensive back, and then they had a rash of injuries at the Z back. They moved Ted Long back there. But you know that you're playing good defense if you see Oklahoma with reverse pass midway through the third quarter. Second and ten. Collins will keep it. Flag is down. You got a holding call. Yeah, so is Collins. Another late flag is down as Gary Howe made the stop on Collins. So there's two flags, one on the Oklahoma backfield and one at the spot of the tackle. So you got a holding call initially as, as Steve Collins reversed his field out from underneath the center. 
one of the offensive linemen just collar to see you buff. A hold and a clip. That's quite a Quinella. See, again, you know, so many mistakes that if you're an Oklahoma fan, you're thinking, what are they doing offensively? And these are the things that happen to a team that is taken out of what they do best. When you force a team that runs the ball 85% of the time. On the offense, personal foul on the offense. They will take the holding penalty. It will still be second down. When you force that kind of team to do something they're uncomfortable with, you're going to have guys make mistakes. You're going to have guys, offensive linemen, that usually fire off and knock people away from the line of scrimmage. Now they have to pass protect. Well, they're not used to that, and they're not nearly as proficient at it. Well, and for the first time in a long time, they're playing Colorado here with the realization is sinking in that they're not the best team on the field. And they're going to have to resort, as you said, to chicanery. Ball is back at the six-yard line. It is second and 17. Dangerous area to operate for Oklahoma. As you can see by the play calls, Perry breaks some tackles, busts out to the 18-yard line where Tim James made the stop. 12-yard pickup. It'll be third and about five. Big play for Oklahoma. Well, Leon Perry at 230 pounds is strong enough to break tackles. Watch him just keep chucking those legs and arm tackles are not going to be good enough to get him to the ground. Guess and Long are wide to the right. Perry and Dewell Brewer the running backs as Lewis is out of the game. Here's Perry. Terry Johnson wraps him up at the 21. He's a couple of yards short. Oklahoma will have to punt it away. Now there's an indication of just wanting to get one of your best ball carriers the ball in a third down situation but unfortunately when your fullback is asked to gain seven yards that's asking quite a bit against a very good defense. Riddell punting into the wind. Campbell back at his 44. CU should get great field position. The interception did not hurt him. Flag is down. They roughed Riddell. And it looks like Oklahoma will get it back. So Colorado has made a couple of mistakes here in the third quarter, and this one will cost them. Well, you'll see as number 26, Julian Hayward, tries to go for the block and absolutely falls into the legs of the kicker. But Colorado's made three personal mistakes. Foul. Rubbing the kicker. Defense, first down. Ball is all the way out to the 35. So a big break for the Sooners, who trail by 10 points with 3.02 to go in the third quarter. Three of those six penalties coming here in the third quarter, and all three have been costly. Collins on first and 10. The pitch to Brewer. He's run out at the 41. As Bruce Young knocked him out. Got a very favorable spot. There's a guy that Oklahoma fans will be seeing a lot of. Dual Brewer, a true freshman. Regarded as one of the fine running back prospects in the country last year. You can see he's got great speed to the outside. They just keep getting those kinds of running backs, don't they? Brewer out a lot in Oklahoma. Perry, Ooh. nothing there. Howe, Jones, McGee, all stack him up right in the middle of the line. Colorado out in front, 10 to nothing. I don't believe it. In here? Introducing Pups Plus with aloe. 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 You're kidding. In the tissue. So you've got the aloe in the lotion, you've got the lotion in the tissue, and you've got your nose that doesn't burn. 
We put aloe in the moisturizing lotion in New Puffs Plus, and it's unscented. Ooh, my wounded nose. Puffs Plus with aloe is less irritating than my regular tissue. New Puffs Plus with aloe. First aid for your sore nose. Ah, uh, that's about it. Ah. Again and again, KG Menswear keeps you coming back. He's back for a Hager Wool Blend Sport Coat, tailored in a herringbone weave for everyday wear, only $79.99. He's back for an Imperial by Hager Sport Coat, tailored from 100% wool and classic Shetland patterns. They're just $99.99. KG keeps you coming back again and again and again. KG Menswear, great clothes for everything you do. Central banks believe if you want to make a difference in Colorado's future, get involved. I believe you make things better by starting at the core. Walking the streets, talking with the kids, and showing them love. You can't separate Colorado's future from these children. Personally, I laid my life on the line for them. You know, you just got to give them a chance to make something of themselves. Central banks, in business for Colorado. 2.25 to go in the third quarter. Third down and four for the Sooners. The ball at their own 42. The pitch to Brewer. He's got a first down out to the 48. Alfred Williams made the tackle, but a big third down conversion by Brewer and the Sooners. Brewer, 195 pounds. A freshman, as Dave pointed out. Good job by Steve Collins drawing the defense to him and then pitching. And Ted Long out in front of Brewer doing a terrific job. Can't really see him until there as he takes Bruce Young and drives him off the line of scrimmage, allowing Brewer to get the necessary yardage. Collins throws and completes it to Long down to the 33. 15 yard pickup and a first down. McLuhan ran him out the first. Pass completion of the day for the Sooners. And Colorado, Dave, has not come out in this third quarter with a type of emotion that they played that first half. It's a naked boot. As Steve Collins rolls out, here Long is wide open, driving McLuhan off the line of scrimmage and a pretty easy throw and catch right there by Oklahoma. Steve Collins has moved them more effectively than Tink Collins as Brewer inside the 30 down to the 28. Howe and Salavea combined to make the tackle. Five-yard pickup, second and five, a minute 40 to go in the third quarter. Colorado 10, Oklahoma nothing. Steve Collins, the freshman, hands it off to Brewer. He's got a hole. Inside the 25 to the 24, it'll be a pickup of four. Michael Jones made the stop. It'll be third and one. You've seen Oklahoma this drive do a pretty good job up front. And Brewer almost able to escape to big yardage. They've got to get to the 24. It's a long one. Actually, the 23. Brewer looks to have enough. We'll see where they spot it. Yeah, I think he's got it. Just enough. Clock is stopped with 46 seconds to go in the third quarter. I'm sure they'll bring the sticks in. Gibbs taking over a program that uh, certainly in turmoil and you see by that much an Oklahoma first down I think he's, he'll be given a lot of time down here at Oklahoma as you see Brewer lunge for the first down Gibbs is an OU guy played his football here as we told you and I think most of the fans in Norman realize that right now he is not blessed with the great talent offensively at quarterback that you need to be a successful team. Plus, they've had a rash of injuries on the defensive side. 
from the 23, first and 10. This is Brewer again. McGee's got him. They'll give him forward progress to the 21. It'll be a pickup of two, second and eight. That may have been the last play of the third quarter. It's 15 seconds and counting. And it is the last play of the quarter. 76,000 strong are up. Trying to push Oklahoma back into it. Don't go away. There's a quarter left. Colorado is out in front. Hi, I'm Dick Jabs. Our four and a half acre warehouse is stacked to the ceiling with unbelievable bargains. So we've marked everything down for a big in-store warehouse sale at all stores. For example, this wood day bed with link springs and Simmons mattress is now only $2.99. Well, this nice brass five-piece dinette set with smoke glass top is now only $2.44. Or these beautifully finished cherry tables are $69, the sofa table $99, and the console and mirror is $129. At our in-store warehouse sale on at all stores. At American. At Meineke Discount Muffler Shops, we're proud of the fact that discount is our middle name. And for nearly 20 years, Meineke's been the first name in advertising a discount price. We always figured we were in business to keep cars quiet, not prices. Now the other chain is advertising a price, saying nobody beats them. Well, the truth is, somebody's been beating their price for a long time. Meineke, the nation's discount exhaust leader. Today is the day to buy a waterbed, because Big Sur Waterbeds has just made a special truckload purchase. This solid wood Contempo is an incredible $93.99 any size. The Country Fair with detailed mirror and bookshelves is only $169.99 any size. Or choose the Valencia with glass curio cabinets for $259.99 king or queen size. Buy your new waterbed today at Big Sur Waterbeds, America's largest, 5150 North Federal and I-225 in the Valley next to Levitt's. Ron Zapolo and Dave Logan back at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. One quarter to play. See you 15 minutes away from wiping out plenty of years of misery here in Norman. They're up by 10, but Oklahoma has the ball, and they won't go down without a fight. They are driving. They've got it second and eight on the Colorado 21. Hey boy, that's what you had to expect. If you're Colorado coming in here, yes, the team that you're going to face has been hurt by injuries, but there's too much pride and, and certainly a lot of tradition behind this Oklahoma Sooner team, and they are not going to go away. We can wave to everybody. We're up top of that uh, white structure up there on top <laughs> of the stadium. We're on the roof. We're on the roof. There's a couple of figures. We'll wave. You'll be able to see us. I'll tell you this. If we had an umbrella, we could play Mary Poppins. <laughs> Second down and eight for Oklahoma. They've got it on the 21. Collins may be checking off as he barks to his wide receivers. It was a busted play as Collins is down right at the line of scrimmage. Tell you what it was, it was reverse pivot and a lot of white jerseys in my backfield. Steve Collins must be thinking, where did they come from? I, by the time I turned around, there they were. And again, the unenviable position of being third and long in the wishbone attack. And we're now in the fourth quarter, so if Oklahoma is going to do it, now's the time. A big rush. You can run it. He's got room, but he's out short of the first down. He steps out at the 16. Williams ran him out. It's going to be fourth and about three. I think now you have to kick it. Take the three points. You kick it with the wind. Leaves you one score down and a full quarter to play. Oklahoma fans clamoring for the Sooners to go for it, but I think a very smart call. You've got a good kicker who's had at least one field goal in 12 straight games, and R.D. Lasher is certainly capable of making one from this distance. Lasher, as you see, 10 of 12. You see what he's done from different yardages. They'll spot it at the 23 from 33 yards out. It is on the way, and it is good. So Oklahoma scoring for the first time today. Lasher, a 35-yard field goal, 14-21 to go. Colorado 10, Oklahoma 3.
Football gave me great memories and some painful needs. I remember those smelly old-fashioned liniments, but time and training methods have changed. Today's trainers use Flexol 454, the aloe vera-based pain-relieving gel used by trainers in all major pro sports. And now Flexol is available to the rest of us who live with pain. I might just ask for my old job back. Flexol 454, it's a winner. It's Ford Truck Month. Time to unveil the new Mountain States Ford Bronco 2. Take Bronco 2 at XLT trim, sport wheels, luggage rack, swing away spare. This exclusive emblem, all for only $265 a month. Plus, get free air and all this. Under $15,000 or only $265 a month. Only $265 a month. Mountain States Bronco 2s, an extra allocation just for the West. Hurry to your Ford dealer during Truck Month. I'm talking to Dean Dowson, president of Empire Nissan on West Colfax at Kipling. I was with brother Steve last week, and he told me that he was the best dealer in town. Well, Tab, we're outselling everyone. Plus, we've been giving away more cash discounts than you'd believe. We've got winners all over the place. How can my brother even think he's the best dealer in town when we at Empire Lakewood Nissan are, without a doubt, the best dealer? Empire Oldsmobile Honda, four blocks west of Monaco on East Colfax, or Empire Lakewood Nissan, West Colfax at Kipling. For the first time, the Sooner Schooner making an appearance. Most people, Dave, remember that uh, Schooner best down in the Orange Bowl a few years back when it may have cost Oklahoma. <laughs> Got out in the field a little bit too soon, didn't it? A premature uh, entrance for the Sooner Schooner. Now, Oklahoma now back into this football game. You can see R.D. Lasher with the 33-yard effort, but it's up to the Colorado offense now to generate some first downs and to take away what momentum has switched. Oklahoma defensively will be very aggressive in this series, feeling like they're back in the game, and they are. And Colorado in the third quarter quite stagnant offensively. You see, they really uh, had it for a long time, 14 plays, 70 yards. Of course, they were given an opportunity by a mistake. Julian Hayward called uh, for roughing the kicker. Oklahoma took it over and drove it down the field. Riddell will kick off. Nelson watches it go out of the end zone. Colorado will take it at the 20. And now the crowd is totally up and into it, exhorting that Oklahoma defense to get it back. You see number 14, Melvin Carter. He ran all the way down into the end zone. And I think he's going to be called for it as he was telling people, come on, let's get into it. Got an offsides in the kick. That offside, offside on the kicking team. Re kick. Melvin Carter was about two yards, two yards past the football, but it was finally a kick. He was so anxious to get to the end zone that he got a bit of a quick start. So Colorado will make him kick it again. 14-21 to go. See you out in front, 10-3. think is going through his mind well he was a linebacker when he played and a pretty good one he's got to be thinking boy defensively now's our chance we've got to keep him down we've got the win we want to get good field position I, I don't want my offense to have to drive 80 yards because we've struggled the entire day and if he loses they fall to five and three and it's been a long long time since Oklahoma was five and three It's been longer since CU was 8-0. <laughs> That's right. 1937 to be exact. This one may be returned. Pritchard from the 6. Across the 20. Across the 35. He's out to midfield before he's finally wrapped up. Great return by Mike Pritchard. how quickly momentum can change in the game of college football. And our man, Melvin Carter, made the tackle. CU has done this all year. They've been very good at returning kicks. Pritchard does a nice job of setting up blocks. And what a 
big, big return at a key time of the game. Turned out to be a pretty big offsides penalty on the kick. Really did. 30-yard gain from midfield. Hagan cuts it up, and he's down to the 45. Wayne Dixon, number 34, made the stop a five-yard pickup, second and five. I tell you, we've talked about Hagan and Flanagan and the rest of the CU backs. Let's give some credit to the offensive line. Watch how far downfield Hagan gets before you see a red jersey. You've got some people up front that are knocking folks off the ball. That's what you have to do if you're going to run against Oklahoma. Coleman, Garten, Lewenberg, Muhlenberg, and Vanderpool. What a job they have done all season. Here's Flanagan. Fine open field tackle by Chris Wilson. Flanagan gets just the yard. It'll be third and four. But well, JJ's had some success of cutting back that lead, and he cuts back maybe a little bit too early. Wilson ducks off the block and is waiting for Flanagan right when he makes his move. Third and four. Colorado needs to get to the 40. Hagan. He's got a first down inside the 40 to the 38. Blevins on the bottom of the pile made the stop. First down for Colorado. Now Coleman left tackle, Garten left guard, Lewenberg the center. Did a nice job, and Hagan realizing how many yards he needs. Keeps the ball inside where it's safe. In past years, it was so difficult for this team to pick up three and four yards on third down against the Oklahoma defense. Oh, today they've been quite successful at it. Hagan knew exactly where the first down marker was. Here's Flanagan, bouncing inside, breaking tackles. Flanagan, down to the 30. A pickup of eight, second and two. Colorado gaining yards by the chunk and working on the clock under 12.30 to go in the game. Again, from the eye formation, which I think Flanagan is at his best in this formation. He sneaks through, he's got great vision, and he just kind of slides off tacklers. Guys have good shots at him, and yet he's able to dip to one side or the other, not give them a good view of his chest, and pick up positive yards. I think J.J. Flanagan will make a fine NFL running back. Got great agree. speed, 190 pounds, he's strong, and certainly very, very capable. We were in Seattle a few weeks ago after the ball game, having some dinner. He came by, told me he really liked my suit, and I said, J.J., a year from now, you'll be able to get all the suits you want, <laughs> and then some. <laughs> he might buy you one. He might buy me one. If he does, yeah, throw one in for me. <laughs> okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Second and two. Hagan looking. He's got Pritchard. First down inside the 15. A 15-yard gain as Colorado rambling down the field. This is just the effect of the option over and over and over again. Pritchard has been knocking folks down when he comes out. Now he runs right by somebody, doesn't block him. He's wide open for the throw. Pritchard, another guy who has been underrated all year. He's got the knack of making the big play. And this is crucial, absolutely, for the Oklahoma defense to keep CU out of the end zone. Hagan's got it. He'll keep it. And he's down to the 10. Blevins and Dillard were there, but it's a five-yard gain for Hagan, second and five. Clock continues to roll, 11.35 to go in the game. If you're Gary Gibbs, you, you got to start taking some chances, blitzing people inside. You'll see Dean Blevins, excuse me, Frank Blevins, slide down. Good move by Hagan inside, making people miss. You've got to start taking some chances defensively to blow up the option attack, try to get people into Hagan's face before he can ride that fullback. You're right, because any type of score is a big score for Colorado. You mean that Oklahoma would have to score twice to win? Hagan, nowhere to go, busted play, and Dillard throws him down at the 10. No gain. Third and five. <laughs> well, that's a play when Hagan looks to ride the fullback, and the fullback goes the other way. He says, where, where are you? Well, I'll try to do something here on my own. 
You're in no man's land is where you are. It looked like the fullback went the wrong way because everybody except the fullback was trying to run the option play to the right. Oklahoma exhorting the crowd to make a lot of noise. Colorado's got to get just inside the five. Option left. No. Kissick up the middle, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. Culbertson comes on to the game. And the ball is on the wide hash mark, so it'll be kicking from an angle. Oklahoma trying to grab the football. You can see Eric Kissick, Dillard really going for that ball. Unable to pry it loose from Eric Kissick. Campbell will hold. They'll spot it at the 17. It's a 27-yard attempt. It is up, and it is good. Ken Culbertson from 27 yards out extends the lead. 9.49 to go in the ballgame. Colorado 13, Oklahoma 3. Have you ever wondered what a baggage handler might take on vacation? What everyone should take. Samsonite's glutton for punishment. Put a luggage cart and a suitcase and what do you get? Samsonite's piggyback. It's particularly handy on long trips like the one from your car to the ticket counter. In Saskatchewan, in San Francisco, in Quebec, and Albuquerque, in Connecticut, in Calgary, Toronto, and Texas. No matter where you go in North America, REMAX sales associates are doing what they do best, selling real estate. Because that's all we do every day, and we do it better than anyone else. Today is the day to buy a waterbed, because Big Sur Waterbeds has just made a special truckload purchase. This solid wood Contempo is an incredible $93.99 any size. The Country Fair with detailed mirror and bookshelves is only $169.99 any size. Or choose the Valencia with glass curio cabinets for $259.99 king or queen size. Buy your new waterbed today at Big Sur Waterbeds, America's largest, 5150 North Federal and I-225 in the valley next to Levin's. Dave, it's funny how the little things make such a difference in a football game. Oklahoma had kicked off into the end zone. Colorado thought they had the 20, but Oklahoma was off sides. And then the big return, they had it at midfield. What a difference that offsides penalty made. No doubt about it. Safe to say this is a crucial drive for Oklahoma. Two scores behind, one of which has to be a touchdown. Under 10 minutes to go. You're almost in four-down territory from wherever there you are. are. I think you are at this point, down by 10, 9.49 to go. They've got the wind at their back. Brewer, three yards deep, he'll run it out. He's across the 20 and down to 21, and Colorado will be penalized for a face mask. It was an obvious one. I'm not sure who was the guilty party, but... Brewer's face mask was ripped, and you'll see it here. Brewer, I'm not sure, wanted to come out and then started to rock forward. Chad Brown, I think. Yeah, you can see the left hand clearly gets the face mask and flings Brewer down. That will cost CU, I imagine, 15 yards. That'll take it out near the 35, so Oklahoma will have good field position. Personal foul. Face mask. And the return. First down. Nine plays, 41 yards on the scoring drive. Culbertson, he's been perfect on the afternoon. Oklahoma has it at their 36. They trail 13 to three. The pitch to Brewer. He gets outside. He's out near midfield, a fine run by Brewer. That's a gain of 15 yards before McLuhan could knock him out, and he got out of bounds and stopped the clock. Well, Alfred Williams has had a great year, but he makes a mistake here. Watch him allow Brewer to freeze him with this move right here. Williams has him dead in the rights. 
And Brewer with that great speed just leaves Alford and gains a first down. Big play for Oklahoma. Took little time, got 15 yards. They're in Colorado territory. Got to admire the Sooners. They will not go down easily. Collins, incomplete. He was looking for guests. McLuhan was on the coverage. Steve Collins actually has Hardy Guess wide open. He just takes his time and delivers the football. Nine thirty-two to go in the game. Each team with two timeouts left. Here's the reverse, and it's fumbled by Long. He's, he still doesn't have it. Finally covers up. Back at the Oklahoma 33, a loss of 17. I think Ted Long tried to look up and see what he was going to find before he caught the ball. I'll tell you, he had a lot of room to run. That thing hit him right in the chest. Couldn't get it. Now he wants to make something happen. Come here. I'll just get on it. Man. Yeah. Just get on it. You know, sometimes when you're, when you're so anxious and you sense a big play, you don't do the little things, like watch the football into your hands. That time, Ted Long just didn't look at it. It cost him about 55 yards. Third and 28. Collins steps up, fires, and it's complete. To a wide open, Ted Long down the sidelines, all the way down to the Colorado 22. Tim James knocks him out. A big play by Oklahoma. Long was wide open. Uh, this is a huge play. You see Steve Collins doing a nice job of avoiding, stepping back in the pocket, and Long just on a crossing route. I mean, wide open is not even the word. There wasn't anybody around him. Chad Brown's trying to chase him down. But had CU been able to hold him right there, this game very well could have been over. So Oklahoma converts a third and 28. They're still breathing. Collins fakes and falls down at the 25. It's a loss of a couple. Well, Ted Long is the Z-back, the guy they call, actually, like the wing-back for Mike Pritchard. You can see him fake, and they just come right across the middle of the field on a drag. And I mean, goodness, he is wide open. He had two catches for 16 yards coming into the ball game. It's second and 12, 8.05 and counting to go in the game. Collins, incomplete, looking for Long. James was there on the coverage. Long points at James as if to say I was interfered with. Well, he did get bumped a little bit, but I don't think the ball could have been caught. Colorado that time decided that we're not going to let Steve Collins sit in the pocket and have all day. They blitz both inside linebackers. And the, a guy, the guy that's not used to throwing the ball, what you want to do is put a lot of pressure on him to force him to throw the ball sooner than he'd like to. If they don't convert, they could still kick the field goal and bring them to within seven and still sure. timely. That's why it was such a big stand defensively for OU to keep Colorado from scoring a touchdown the last drive. Here they come again. Now they may be out of field goal range as Collins is down at the 31. Walker made the stop. Lasher is coming on, but they made it much tougher for him. Again, watch from the left side of your screen. You'll see nothing but white. Walker is there. Bruce Young is there, the free safety. Chad Brown is there, one of the linebackers. Not going to let him stand back there and just count the house, try to find the open receiver. His long of the year, 49. That's what this will be. From 49 yards out. It is wide to the left and no good. Not even close. 7-17 to go. Colorado has the football. Are you tired of paying too much for a Christmas tree? Trying to cram a tree into the trunk of your compact car? Cleaning up the mess? And not getting a fresh tree? There must be an easier way. We take the hassle out of Christmas. A fresh tree delivered right to your door. Cut to size and set up if you like. Trees from 4 feet to 20 feet. 
Priced from $25 to $85, depending on type and size. Perfect for home or business. A limited number of quality trees is available in each delivery area. So you must order now and avoid the Christmas rush. This is a limited time offer. You must call now for best delivery dates and prices will increase closer to Christmas. Visa and MasterCard welcome. Order now and receive a free Christmas ornament and pamphlet on caring for your tree. Call 1-800-642-7400. Set up in your home and tree stands available for small extra charge. For best delivery dates, call now. 1-800-642-7400. Never in Denver. Special purchase 89 Lincoln Town Cars and Cottonelles. Only at Valley Lincoln Mercury in Boulder and Lincoln Mercury in Longmont. 89 Town Cars, only 18888 Loaded with powerful V8 and more. Save thousands. 18888 Even the finest front-wheel drive Lincoln Continental, 19999 The only luxury car with dual airbags, 19999 But this incredible offer is for a limited time and never in Denver. Only at Valley Lincoln Mercury in Boulder and Lincoln Mercury in Longmont. First and ten for the Buffs. They have it on their own 31, 7 17 away from beating Oklahoma. Hagan cuts it up inside. Nice run out to the 37. A pickup of six. It'll be second and four. Colorado now with an eye on that clock. We're under seven minutes. They have the ball. They lead by ten. And with the defense playing the way they are, it's essential now you, you don't take any foolish chances. No need to make any throws, you wouldn't think. Be very cautious, you can run the option. And at the worst, you line up and punt it. Here's Flanagan. Inside, J.J., maybe a yard. Frank Blevins, 35, made the stop. It'll be third and about five. Colorado can certainly, if they can hang on for the last six and a half minutes, be very pleased with a victory here in Norman. But frankly, they've got to be thrilled because they, they've beaten the Sooners at their game. There weren't any long passes. There weren't really any big plays offensively other than just option football. Let's run it to see if you can stop us. Third down. Colorado's got to get to the 42. Hagan's with it. Not even close. He's nailed at the 38. Chris Wilson made the stop, and Colorado will have to punt. So 540 and counting, Oklahoma will get it back. Oklahoma right now fighting the clock as much as Colorado. See you not taking any chances third and long. Hagan not going to pitch the ball unless somebody is absolutely wide open. And Oklahoma still needing two scores. Colorado taking all their time. Clock still moving under 520. Brewer lets it bounce. And it's down at the 20. So with five minutes and five seconds to go, Oklahoma takes over on their own 20. Trailing by 10. And Colorado has them where they want them because they have little time. They can't afford to drive it down methodically on the ground. They've got to strike and strike quickly. I wonder how Bino Cook feels. I haven't thought much about Bino Cook. Did he uh, predict another uh, predict Colorado a defeat? Oklahoma upset. Bino, a uh, interesting guy on ESPN. He ought to come out to Boulder and enjoy what's a pretty good football team. Yeah, it's hard to predict when you don't see the team play. Bright sunshine now. Five minutes to go. Sooners must get something big quick. Well, they don't have to, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, that's, uh, that has not been easy for this team. Really a team that's been able to dictate to their opponents with a great running attack over the years. They haven't had to throw, and they haven't been behind much. Oklahoma's down 13-3. They've got the ball in the 20. There are five minutes and five seconds to go. They've got two timeouts left. All 76,000 are still here. Here's the reverse. 
fumbled by Guess. He loses it. Arthur Walker is near it. And I believe Colorado's got it. Arthur Walker is on the bottom of that pile when they unstack. <laughs> you can see him signaling flat on his back. <laughs> Colorado has the football at the Oklahoma 10. Now, I don't believe I'd ever run that play again if I'm Oklahoma, because they've had a hard time. That thing hits him right in the chest again. This is just Art Guess instead of Ted Long. Guess can't get to it, actually does, and the ball trickles away. Here comes Arthur Walker, and how he was able to scrape that thing in with one hand, I'll never know, but Colorado with a golden opportunity to seal this victory away in Norman. Colorado has it at the Oklahoma 9. It's first and goal. Get him! Hand off to Flanagan. J.J. wrapped up by the line of scrimmage by Frank Blevins. Maybe got a yard. Flanagan and Blevins now having a few words. Now frustration is set in for Oklahoma. Well, it's been a long frustration period for Colorado, which is about to come to an end. They haven't won here since 1965. Second and goal. Kissick. He gets maybe a yard. He's stacked up. Wilson hit him along with Levins. It's third and goal. Colorado choosing to take a little chance. Four minutes to go in the game. This is the play that uh, a couple of times Colorado's been able to get a big gain out of. Kissick that time forced to run sideways almost. And not much yardage picked up. But the clock is the important thing. Under four minutes to go, keeping the ball on the ground. And as you mentioned, Ron, not taking many chances either. Third and goal, Kissick 33, Pritchard 9, Flanagan 2. All behind quarterback Darian Hagan. Hagan's got it. Cuts it inside. Touchdown! The streak is over. But a flag is down. That's going to be a late flag, I believe, on CU celebrating in the end zone. I think it is. But you know what? Because there was no flag thrown before Darian Hagan crossed the goal line. Celebration was well worth it. Touchdown is good. Sportsmanlike conduct. This way. That may be the only time Bill McCartney says this penalty is okay. Watch Hagen again. The ball fake freezes to Kwasi and over the goal line he goes. It's going to be a fun plane ride home, I want to tell you. It's going to be a I'm fun week for Colorado will be assessed on the kickoff. It's been a fun year for the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. Because this one with 326 to go is in the bank. Bill McCartney issued t-shirts to all the kids Thursday that simply said times have changed. And oh how true. Did you ever think as a CU All-American, a member of the 100 year anniversary team, one of the greatest athletes ever produced by this university, did you ever think you'd be standing up here someday watching your alma mater do what they're doing to Oklahoma? Well, you always hope. You see Eric Benamy and Darren Muhlenberg. Wasn't that long ago, folks. 1984, this team won one game. They beat Iowa State when the Cyclone kicker missed a chip shot right at the end of the game. And that is a happy group of Buffaloes, and deservedly so. It could be enemy. <laughs> you you got to love him. Yeah, his leg doesn't hurt too much right now. And the national championship dream Continues. lives on. Next step, next Saturday. So maybe the most important game in the 
school's history today. Now the most important game in the school's history next Saturday. Easily so. Nebraska winning today against Iowa State. They will come in undefeated. Like fourth in the country. You know, depending on what happens, Miami and Notre Dame have uh, very tough games. Who knows? We may be seeing two of the top three teams at least ranked next week in the country in Boulder. What more do you want? Two undefeated teams playing not only for probably the Big A title, but conceivably the national title. This is Brewer with a hole out to the 45. But at this point, Oklahoma with 3.20 to go, down by 17. They would need more than just a minor miracle. See a lot of white jerseys knocking guys down. Hagen again with that little ball fake. Does a nice job of freezing the contained guy. Doesn't know whether to go for Hagen or the pitch man. In Colorado, a very short scoring drive after the fumble recovery. Hey, what a run. I mean, he just, he was not going to be denied. DeQuazy had him from around the waist at the five, and Hagen just said, you're along for the ride. I'm getting to the goal line. Collins makes a couple miss, throws down the sideline, nearly picked off by Tim James. He was looking for Adrian Cooper. Crowd has really thinned out as they're on their way to that Irish pub across the street. Collins does a nice job escaping McGee. Now, if this ball is thrown a little quicker, he's got Cooper wide open, but Tim James able to make a nice recovery, almost a terrific one-hand interception. again a bullet and it's incomplete in and out of the hands of Adrian Cooper Cooper the junior from Denver South Cooper said Colorado's got to come in here and prove it this week well Colorado came in and proved it This is a real milestone in this program. One big hurdle overcome by Colorado. Collins throws and Chad Brown nearly picked that off. And it's fourth down with 2.56 to go. Trying to make something happen. Steve Collins throws this to a well-covered receiver. Chad Brown does a pretty good job keeping the ball alive, tipping it up in the air. Dave, the Sooners now fall to five and three for the first time since 1969. Hmm. Well, five and three won't cut it here in Norman. No. I think Gary Gibbs is going to be given a grace period because of the situation that he inherited. But safe to say that in the ensuing years, records as this will get you nothing to fire. Oklahoma takes a timeout with 2.56 to go. Yeah, over the five and three just does not wash. And they Oklahoma. still have Nebraska to play. Yeah. That game will be right here. <laughs> Chip is worn out. <laughs> Three bowl uh, bowls are being represented here. Cotton Bowl, Florida Citrus Bowl, Sunkissed Fiesta Bowl. They may be looking at Oklahoma and not Colorado because Colorado has their sights set elsewhere. Collins on fourth down. And they call that a completion to guess at the 40. Wasn't sure if he had dropped it or not. They'll give, they'll give it to him. First down for Oklahoma at the 40. Clock now moving at 2.45. 
Collins will just get out of bounds, and he does at the 43. A loss of three. He just couldn't find anybody open downfield, and he had plenty of time. This game, Ron, as you mentioned, really a statement now that the Big Eight, affectionately known as the Big Two over the years, is now the Big Three. I mean, Colorado was nice to beat Nebraska at home a couple of years ago, 20 to 10, but until you knock off the champ, and Oklahoma has been to the Orange Bowl for the last five years, and until you do it in their backyard, you really are not recognized as the challenger. Michael Jones got a hand on that pass and broke it up. You're right. Knocking them out in their own ring. This, this clearly says that Colorado is ready to ascend to this level year in and year out. It will help recruiting. It, it just is a huge step for this program. There's no longer any question nationally. You can't say Colorado hasn't played anybody. You can't say Colorado hasn't won a big one on the road. There, there are no other ifs about Colorado. They're here. They've arrived. Collins over the middle. He's got guess. Now he dropped that one. And I'll call that one incomplete. Had it and let it go. It hit the ground. He tried to grab it real quick, but Cardi Guest did not catch this ball. Actually hits him in the pads and see if he can see the ball trickle away. Get on the ground and watch how quickly Guest gets his hands on it. See the ball right there. I try to cover this thing up. Hopefully nobody will see. Should have had it. Fourth down. 13 to go. Ball in the 43. See, nobody comes to Oklahoma to be a receiver. You come to be a running back, and then you have too many of them, and you put a couple out at wide receiver. But, <laughs> I mean, you don't, if you're a great receiver, you just don't want to come to Oklahoma. They don't throw the ball enough. And consequently, they have a tough time catching a lot of throws. Collins is going to try to run forward. He's not going to make it. He's down at the 38, and Colorado, after the tackle by Tim James, will take over on downs with 2.18 to go. And the celebration has started down on that Colorado sideline. They are motioning to their two sections of fans in Owen Field here. There's one of them. 3,000 tickets sold in Boulder. Nice following down here in Norman. They're easy to spot in this sea of red. They've all got gold and black on them. And let's hope there's no sea of red next Saturday. Here's Campbell on the reverse. Jeff's got some room. Across the 45, out to midfield. That one's kind of surprising, Dave. Uh, what does that tell you, that call? Well, that tells me what goes around comes around. Yep, that's what it tells me, too. That tells me Bill McCartney's quite aware that he'd lost uh, all the years he's been a head coach here. Jeff Campbell <laughs> has to go deeper than he'd like, and thus he's not able to get down the sideline. Pretty well set up, and Colorado had it blocked nicely see what they come up on this play. They've got a first and 10 from the Oklahoma 48. Here's Flanagan. Up the middle. He got a couple. Joe Bowden made the stop on JJ. Two minutes to go in the game. A game that basically ended when Darian Hagan scored on third and goal from the nine. Second down. Ball to 47. Hagan. Inside the 45 to the 43. Make it third and about four. That clock just continues to roll. Minute 15 to go and counting. Darian Hagan wanted to come to Oklahoma. Actually visited here and on his trip back to the airport, Jamil Holloway told him that the coaches were going to make him a running back. And that was the end of any consideration given to coming here and attending the University of Oklahoma. Sure, all the Oklahoma faithful want to thank Jamil for that. And the coaching staff. Here's the pitch to Flanagan. J.J. outside, gets by one man, nowhere to go, and down he goes. Belser, who missed him originally, finally made the tackle. But the clock is at 37 seconds and running.
Flanagan could have dipped inside as Mike Pritchard had Belser initially. Looked like he wasn't sure as to which direction to go. Obviously wanted to stay in bounds, too. CU's got their punt team on. I'll tell you, the CU fans that are in the stands are making a lot of noise. Colorado 20, Oklahoma 3. We'll take a break. We'll be back to Norman in just a minute. The best is what you get at your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Now get $302,000 cash back. We've got Plymouth Colt now with $1,500 cash back. And get $750 cash back and Plymouth Acclaim. Or get the four-wheel drive Plymouth Vista with $750 cash back. The best is what you get at your Chrysler Plymouth. Denver's way to go is at the sign of the best. Your Denver Metro Chrysler Plymouth dealer. The KG Menswear Fall Suit and Sport Coat Sale because every man deserves the best. And now you can afford it. Save on suits by American designer Oleg Cassini. Superbly crafted in fine worsted wools and blends from $199.99 for the well-dressed man. And save on arrow dress shirts in classic solids and contemporary stripes from $19.99. It's here during our fall suit and sport coat sale. KG Menswear. Great clothes for everything you do. If you've got yourself a car and you've got yourself a house, you could be on your way to some very nice savings. Because with Allstate Homeowners Insurance and an excellent driving record, you could save up to 15% on your auto insurance. And 15% could mean big money for all the important little things. What a what a day. The Allstate Auto Advantage. Another reason. A member of the Sears Financial Network. GMC Truck now offers proof that actions speak louder. It's Action Cash with $1,000 cash back on S15 pickups or $1,250 cash back on S15 jimmies. Available both on new 89 and 90 models. Or choose low APR GMAC financing. So don't miss Action Cash at GMC Truck. You'll have a very good reaction. GMC Truck. It's not just a truck anymore. GMC Truck. 30 seconds left as most of the crowd has filed out of Owen Field. Joe Rizzo sitting down the with the assistant coaches. Offense. Congratulations. Joe Rizzo, part of the greatest linebacker core the Broncos have ever had. And Joe's done a good job. His first year up here, and I he guess so. He doesn't know what it's like to lose yet. <laughs> he doesn't want to know either. Bruin will punt. And like everything else, it's gone CU's way as this one bounces down to the one. And now it's into the end zone for a touchback. With 18 seconds. I think we've got Bill Marolt, the AD. I just want to get a word with him before we go. Bill, congratulations. Thanks, Ron. It's, uh, I mean, this is one of the great days in the history of our program, without I, question. I was going to say, Dave and I have talked about this maybe, and it's hard to say, but maybe the most important game uh, ever in the program. I, I don't think there's any question. Uh, to come in here, uh, beat a, a team that, that hardly ever loses, uh, puts us 8-0 uh, next week's for all the marbles. I mean, it's just, it's ideal. It's, it, you couldn't write it, it's, it's a storybook, you couldn't write it better. No, it's been a terrific day, and all the Colorado people that were up here uh, just have a tremendous special feeling about this one. It's been a long time coming. Boy, it really has been a long time coming. Dave's sitting here shaking his head. We've both been through a lot, a lot of tough days against these guys. I'll tell you what, I'm just enjoying it. Dave is. I think for people to realize, you know, you're all American here, and you play here for four years. It, it's a little emotional to come into this place against this team with so much tradition and not just beat them, but beat them the way you've done it today. Yeah, we really did. We did a good job. Uh, we missed Eric a little bit, but it, but uh, we did we did a great job, no question. And there's your head coach who's accepting a few congratulations. Oh, he's done a heck of a job. There's uh, He's got to feel really good. Uh, you know, you ha you're concerned when you come in, and uh, even though Oklahoma was... Uh, yeah. 
you know, ha has not played as well as they have, he was concerned. It's tough to win here. I don't care how many injuries you have or what the situation is. You come in here and you beat Oklahoma, you've done something. With, well, with the end of the game coming up, Dave and I said, no longer can anybody say, well, Colorado hasn't played a big team. They haven't had a big win on the road. You have now, you're firmly established nationally as of today. Yeah, I agree. I think that this is now, we can, we can really use this to catapult the program into the future. I mean, we've still got... Uh, a, a great season ahead of us, but as, as you really project this thing out now in terms of recruiting and, and what we're trying to do, uh, it, it's, it's just going to be neat. Uh, it's going to be great. Final play of the ball game, a game that has been dominated by Colorado as Collins with the clock at zero throws it up and it's knocked down and that is it. Bill, thanks very much. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Ron. I enjoyed it. Okay. Bill Marold, the AD at Colorado. Gary Gibbs walks off the field, and what can you say? What can you say? I don't, tell you what, I, I don't think there's much to say. Defensively, they were outstanding. Colorado really did a terrific job in making the big plays at the big time, and offensively, just enough, especially running the ball, to do something they had not done before, and that was control the line of scrimmage and punch out first down after first down and actually just get the ball into the end zone. They got 20 points today. The last four years combined, they had 20 points. And J.J. Flanagan. There he is. Stepping in for Eric Vinamy. Terrific job. And there's part of the 3,000 that made the trip. And they're going up in the stands and thanking some of the crowd. Some of the players are on their way into the stands here at Owen Field in Norman. On the far sidelines, they're making their way up into the stands. An emotional moment for this program and for that band. Colorado ranked third, maybe to go higher as they win in convincing fashion. Dave, I think next Saturday will truly be a special day in Colorado football history, as this one was today. We'll see you up there. You sure will. Final score, Colorado 20, Oklahoma 3. I'd like to thank our staff here in Norman. I'd like to thank our spotter, Becky Yon, one of, one of the best who did an excellent job again today. For my partner, Dave Logan, this is Ron Zopolo saying one more time, because it sounds good today, final score.